Good evening and welcome to Woodson Football Field here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Site of tonight's National Public Safety Football League game featuring the 0-2 Tri-State Shields and the 1-1 Roanoke Rampage. My name is Tom Scavetta. I want to thank you all for joining us here tonight on the First Responders Network. Tonight's broadcast marks the, uh, the third of five FRN broadcasts this season, and this also marks tonight the first time these two teams will have ever met. I'm now joined alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's game, John Heffernan. John, it is National Police Memorial Week here in the country and D.C. playing host site. Yeah, honoring our first responders and law enforcement, and it's been a great week here in D.C., National Police Week. It uh, concluded with a beautiful candlelight vigil not too long ago, so we want to pay respects on our 2023 and PSFL Game of the Week here at National Police Week in Washington, D.C. And, Tom, we've got a good one on tap tonight. Absolutely. To briefly recap, Tri-State 0-2 on the season. They are coming off a tough 23-20 overtime loss to the Fire Department of New York City. And for Roanoke, they're coming off a nice 21-0 shutout against LAPD just a few weeks ago. Absolutely. I mean... The Tri-State Shields have been snake bit this year. No doubt about it. Head coach Jeff Pastore said, listen, we gave that game away to the fire department, losing in overtime. You also mentioned the guys on the other side of the football with a win this year against Los Angeles, a big mark market team, and they lose a tough one, Tom. I think it's their week this week. We'll definitely see what happens, folks. Roanoke has won the toss and has elected to defer. They are the road team here tonight. And, John, quickly, our first player to watch for Tri-State, David Ugart, uh, a player that Jeff Pastore, the Tri-State head coach, has talked about. Great escapability, but he wants him to hang in the pocket just a little bit longer. Yeah, he's he's been a little uh, – he's got a little case of happy feet back there. And Coach Jeff Pastore said, listen, he's got to be more patient. He's got to make his reads better. This is a kid that played flag football before uh, making the jump to the NPSFL. A great athlete, an undersized player. He's great on his feet but we'd like to see him throw the ball a little bit more today as well. And our Shields defensive player to watch is Nick Pastore, the coach's son, goes both ways, led the team against FDNY with 10 tackles and had a touchdown reception to go with four catches against the red and white. A big a touchdown indeed for number nine, Nick Pastore. This guy plays in all facets of the game. We may see him return a couple of kicks and punts today as well. The only thing this guy's not doing is uh, giving out water to his teammates, and we might see him do that as well. Very tight hands. And for Roanoke, the, it is the running back, Michael Johnson, known as MJ. A lot of finesse and power for their number one star running back. Well, absolutely the best player on this Roanoke Rampage team, number 13, the running back, Michael Johnson, played his college ball at Virginia Military <laughs> Institute in the secondary, making the switch over to running back here in the NPSFL. And you know what? We might even see him at a little quarterback today as well. Scored eight touchdowns last year in four games. And finally, our defensive player to watch for the Rampage is defensive end Zach Deck. Had 10 tackles, a sack, and a forced fumble against the fire department of New York City and had a great game against LAPD as well. He is a rookie, and he played for his head coach, uh, Zach, Zach Hayden. Yeah, absolutely. Played for Zach Hayden in high school, at Glenver High School. And, you know, the one thing about Zach Deck, he's soft-spoken, but he is intense. He's got a nose for the football. The motor never stops running with this guy at defensive end. Watch some of his technique. A very technically sound player. Loves to rush the quarterback as well. And uh, has a nose for the football and a big playmaker. And a lot of speed for Zach Deck. That wraps up our pregame, John, and the head coach for both teams, Jeff Pastore, 9-5 and five as the Tri-State head coach in his fourth season. They'll be wearing their home blacks with the silver pants. The Roanoke Rampage will be wearing the classic away Virginia textile uniforms with the purple helmets, the white jerseys, the orange numbers, maroon trim. The head coach for the Roanoke Rampage is Zach Hayden in his seventh season. On to kick off for the Roanoke Rampage is Trey Baker, number 45 out of the Virginia Corrections Department. They will kick off. Jeff Pastore is back deep. It is a pooch kick muffed by the up man who is taking it up 
That looks like Pat Olchovy. He's got some daylight. He's across midfield. He's across the 40. Excellent starting field position for the Tri-State Shields. Pat tiptoeing down the sideline. Uh, not a great kick, but a beautiful return by Olchovy, which is going to give the Shields great position here to start their first offensive series of the game. And, folks, it's a beautiful night here in Washington, D.C. The sun slowly starting to go down, creating uh, some little bit of shade issues, sun issues on the field. we got to keep an eye out for that. But uh, Tri-State in a great position here, Tom. 71 degrees and mostly sunny here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., Woodson High School. Tri-State, their quarterback will get to the starters. David Ugart is the quarterback. The running back is number two, Marlon Beckles. He's a captain back there with Jamar Edwards. The receivers are number 22, Pat Olchovy, number 85, Chris Cribbs, number nine, Nicholas Pastore, and number 13, the tight end, Keith Hennon. Michael Ambrosio, the center, number 68, Anchors the offensive line. A quick throw and catch by Keith Hennon. He picks up short yardage brought down there by Chris Thayer of the Rampage. Yeah, Chris Thayer, uh, kind of a, a, a bit of a potato sack tossed to the ground, making his presence felt here in the early going of this first offensive season uh, series, I should say, for the Shields. And the defense for Roanoke. Trying to set a tone here early despite the excellent field position for Tri-State. Ugart is in a shotgun set with Edwards to his left. He takes the handoff, has some daylight. He's going to run over a couple of Rampage defenders for a first down before Shiloh Beal Jr., the police officer from Prince George County, makes the stop. And Sean, uh, John, Tri-State so far offensively, a little bit of a mixed bag. We saw the quick throw to Hennon, and now we see the run by Jamar Edwards. And Tom, you know, you got to watch the push of that offensive line for Tri-State. They seem to be dominating in the trenches here in this first series. Got to get a little more pushback from that D-line from Roanoke. But that's going to be the key, folks, especially uh, with establishing the run as Tri-State has here in the early going. First and 10 from the Rampage 21-yard line. They'll hand off to Edwards off the tackle on the left side, tripped up there by number... 22, that is Nick Spradlin, the safety. And to introduce the Roanoke Rampage defensive starters, Todd Farris, number 11, the defensive end and general manager for the Rampage, along with number 76, David Price. Number 88, Zach Deck, the defensive end. The linebackers are Cameron Scott, Chris Thayer, Adam Burton, and Jamal Payne. The cornerbacks are Wesley Richer and Isaiah Persinger, and the safeties are Nick Spradlin and Shiloh Beal Jr. Three receivers set, two receivers to the left. Ugart surveys under duress by Deck. He gets away from him, and he runs out of bounds for a pickup of about eight, chased out of bounds there by Spradlin. And Ugart kind of hanging that ball way out to his side. He better be careful there. The lefty with an impressive run, though, and giving you, gives you an a, a ideal indication of what Ugart can do. Especially on the ground, he had about eight carries last week, uh, Tom, against the fire department. He had eight rushes against FDNY, 13 of 22, one touchdown and one interception in that game. And I mentioned during the intro, as it's a bad snap, snap, and Ugart will just have to sit down, and he's tackled there by Burton John. I think I, you know, in, in our pregame introduction, Tom, mentioning the loss that Tri-State had against the fire department as saying Jeff Pastore gave it away. Um, tell us a little bit about your thoughts with Roanoke, though, as far as their wins and losses this season. Well, both of their losses have been very, or what, their one loss has been very minimal for Roanoke, losing by one point to FDNY. For Tri-State, John, it's also been heartbreakers for them, losing the FDNY by three points in overtime and even though they got shut out by the NYPD they kept it close up until that third quarter twin receivers to each side for Ugart faces some pressure going deep incomplete and Deck was there to knock down the quarterback this will bring up fourth down and 13 well you gotta like how the Roanoke Rampage defense responded there especially with the excellent field position for Tri-State they held him and as we mentioned, both of these teams evenly matched. Roanoke 
After that loss to FD, the president of the fire department in New York City went on record as saying, we did not deserve to win that game. And you, Tom, you got to think about the history of this Roanoke Rampage team. They got beat up for so many years when they first started, losing 54-0 to Charlotte. Now they're playing with the big boys in Division I, and they have shown up big time this season. So that was actually fourth down as Roanoke will take over on downs, and Chisholm will hand off to the running back. Uh, MJ, who is slammed down by Danny Perez, the head linesman will mark MJ as down. Short yardage there. And you know, the linebacking core of Scarnati and Perez, some call it the best linebacking core of the entire National Public Safety Football League. I'm sure the fire department would have something to say about that in the city of New York. But right there, Perez stepping up, um, snuffing the run there on the first down. Just a uh, gain of a couple of yards. Will be second down and eight. Ball on the 26-yard line. Let's take a look at the Rampage offensive starters. Their quarterback is number four, Sean Chisholm. Running back is Michael Johnson, also known as MJ. Receivers are DeAndre Brown, Matthew Lewis Bell, Sam Edmonds. The tight end is Shamaya Adams as MJ took a carry there and he was walloped once again by Perez. And that Rampage offensive line is highlighted by Big six foot five left tackle, number 99, Brian Epperly, who anchors an experienced Rampage offensive line, John. Yeah, an absolute monster on the line for Roanoke. Certainly a player to watch in the trenches for the Rampage this afternoon here in D.C., as it is now quickly third and four for the Rampage, uh, the biggest offensive play of the game for them so far in this first series. Third and four upcoming. Chisholm will hand off to MJ, tackled in the backfield beautifully there by the Tri-State Shields. Looked like John Vega got back there along with Ivan Manji to make the stop fourth down. Ivan Manji, the defensive end for the Tri-State Shields, also acts as the team president, works for the uh, Department of uh, the, the New York City Joint Terrorism Task Force, I might add. For Ivan Manji just has a big responsibility in uh, one of the biggest cities in the world. And we want to thank Ivan for keeping us safe and his teammates. Thank him there for making the stop. Trey Baker onto punt. Very close to blocking it was Tri-State. It takes an unfriendly bounce, though, at the Tri-State 47-yard line. That punt did not log much at all. Just a total of 26 yards, and that's and, where the Shields will take over. And once again, Tom, Tri-State with excellent field position. The way things are going here, Tom, <laughs> it looks like points are going to be at a premium here in the first quarter as the clock continues to count down. We're at 9-11 to go in the first quarter, 0-0 the score. And it will be Tri-State with the football for their second opportunity offensively. What did you think of that first series, Tom? Definitely flying by as scripted. MJ getting some carries early. And Tri-State answered the bell, st stuffing the run. Ugarda loves operating out of that shotgun as well. He's got a couple of receivers to his right, and it's a quick Pass screen. complete to Beckles on the near side. Shoved out of bounds by the Rampage. That was Isaiah Persinger. Good gain there for the Shields. Gain of about six so it's kind of like rpo on reset here uh, the possibility of run pass option of uh, getting the ball safely out to number two beckles but no gain on the play and uh we can't uh, talk about this game without talking about the loss of uh miguel masonette one of the top backs for Tri-State. Big yeah. loss for the Shields. He's not here as there's Jamar Edwards tripped up by Adam Burton. Nice tackle. That's his second of the game. And, you know, you brought up a good point, John. No Miguel Masonette, a player who played in the NFL for six or seven different teams, did not travel with the Shields. And that leaves them with Marlon Beckles and Jamar Edwards to carry that workload here tonight. And it was Beckles who got the shields on the board for the first time about two weeks ago against the fire department. It was a quick strike for the shields who set the tone in that game yeah. in New Rochelle, New York. And Mason, that certainly will be missed today. And Beckles is uh, getting the call early and often here 
in the first quarter. Three receivers set for the Shields. Ugart rolls left, hit hard, and it's caught. Oh, no, let's see man. what they roll. That has to be, a, they're going to roll it a catch as of right now. But man. what a hit. It looked like Olchovi held on to it. He got absolutely popped on the sideline. I thought that might be a little late or while down, he was too. out of bounds, but it's going to be a first down. It's a third down conversion for the Shields. Nicely done by Ugart. And Ugart, Tom, put it exactly where it had to be as we take a look at it again as two players converge on the receiver. And it was number 27 for Roanoke. It was Elijah Blue. Two receiver set, three receiver set. Keith Hennon is the tight end in motion, right to left. Edwards in the backfield. He takes the handoff, stopped by Burton, pickup of about two. Second down and eight. Tackle number three for Adam Burton. The deputy marshal. Five years on the team now. And John, we got the opportunity to speak with Adam Burton pregame, and he was an awesome guy to talk to. He had a lot of nuts and bolts for us to bring up. Uh, he's very familiar with his defensive coordinator, one of Brad Harris's best friends, the, the Roanoke DC. Yeah, you know, Brad Harris got such a high football IQ. Uh, there's the defensive coordinator on this team and one of his best friends, Burton, who uh, is a U.S. Marshal and has done some great work all over the country in that capacity and it does a great job on the field as well. Number six, Burton. Second and eight as Deck brings down Beckles from behind. Beckles picked up about five more yards. Should bring up third and three. Marlon told me before the game, we should have beat the fire department 40 to 14. He said, you wow. know, we, we beat ourselves in that game. And Beckles looking to return this team to winning ways today. For those of you who are new to the broadcast, the First Responders Network, where Heroes Live, launched on May 23rd of last year. We are coming up on one year of the First Responders Network. So happy almost one year to everybody at FRN. Ugart, three receivers set, two to the right. It's Olchovian Cribs, and that's where Ugart's looking. Now he has to flush out left. Two Rampage defenders trip. It is incomplete over the head of Hennon. That should bring up fourth down and five for the Shields. And Ugar outran three different defensive linemen and was able to still get that ball away. It kind of fell into no man's land, and it is going to bring up fourth down, Tom. Fourth down and five, and... But Ugart really giving uh, us a show at what he can do as far as his scrambling abilities. Yeah. You know, we haven't talked much about the opposing quarterback, and since it is the most important position on the field, Chisholm, number four, complete uh, antithesis of David Ugart at 6'5", 240 pounds. One second, John. We have a timeout taken on the field by the Tri-State Shields, but definitely... Hold that thought on Sean Chisholm. Would love to see what he does. We're going to step aside for a short break. But first, the first quarter is brought to you by OfficerPrivacy.com. First responders, did you know you may have dozens of online profiles that could put you and your family's personal information at risk? Delete unwanted profiles by going to OfficerPrivacy.com and protect your family today. So as I was saying, you know, with the difference in styles, Chisholm 6'5", 240 pounds, not having the ability. Oh, we're back here. Uh, John, Tri-State, fourth and five, they're going for it. Tri-State rolling the dice, Tom. Gart with three receivers on the field. Rolls left, under some pressure, takes a hit. 
Incomplete, deflected beautifully by Tri-State, and guess who? Shiloh Beal, turnover on down. Shiloh Beal showing his athleticism there. Just got high enough for the air to tip the one out of the way. And Ugart had a wide open receiver. Thank goodness Beal was able to get that and knock it out of the way. If you're a Rampage fan, Shiloh Beal, another player to watch. And this Rampage team, definitely defensive-minded, definitely the strength of this team, according to their coaching staff. And it all starts with their secondary, a shutdown secondary that showed its strength right there on the deflection by Beal. Let's take a look at the Tri-State defensive starters. Their captain, number one, Ivan Manji on the defensive line, along with Ross DiStefano, Preston Uogirin, known as Cookie, Robert Rivera, the linebackers are Tony Scarnani and Danny Perez, a couple of captains, along with Lamont Gibson. Raheem Bradshaw and Nick Pastore highlight the secondary as that pass by Chisholm is picked off by Vega, who is going backwards for some reason. So Chisholm throws his eighth interception this season in just three games, and there is the first turnover, John. Ah, uh, yeah, Chisholm, that's something uh, they've worked really hard at leading into this one to try to limit the turnovers. And as you said, he's got one of the league leading statistics in that category and just threw another one. And that's the first turnover of the game, Tom. And it's a big one. And once again, the Shields are gonna have excellent field position to start this series. Yep. Chisholm. 6'5", 240 out of Kentucky Wesleyan. Roanoke City Sheriff's Office. Had four picks against the fire department, three picks against LA. He throws his first today for the first turnover. Tri-State, three receivers set. Olchovi in the slot to the right. Cribs on the near side. Pastore split out wide left. Beckles takes the handoff. Dragged down from behind by Deck. Picked up about six. And a pretty big hole for Beckles to run through and didn't have to do much. Put his head down, north-south running, and picked up six yards. Tri-State will take that all day long. And, Tom, you know what another thing to speak about is Tri-State really has nothing to lose today. They were 0-2 on the season. They're pretty much eliminated from the championship game contention at this phase. And I think all the pressure's off of them, and they seem to be thriving right now after the interception. And uh, let's see how things work out. Throw in Rice. This Drops series. by Beckles. A little wide. And Beckles started to turn and run before catching that one. Ugart couldn't have put it in any better place than he did there. Ugart, very athletic player, reading a little bit better. Pastore would like him to hang in there a little longer. Jeff Pastore, fourth season, looking for his 10th win as head coach of the Shields. 31 years with the NYPD, served as a sergeant. Midtown South, Jeff Pastore. Twin receivers to each side. The back is Edwards. Ugart, under duress, looks caught by Cribs on the slant. He's got some room. He's breaking tackles left and right. Finally dragged down by Thayer. And that is a Tri-State Shields First down, nicely done. Cribs ping-ponging around there in the secondary, and it took them a while, Roanoke, to get Cribs down. And if I'm head coach, Hayden, I'm not happy right there with that defensive tackling that we just saw or lack thereof by Roanoke. That's a gain of 10 for Cribs, and that'll bring up first and 10 from the Rampage 26-yard line. Ugart trips to the left. They throw pass caught by Beckles. Puts a little spin move, tackled nicely little, there. Little razzle dazzle by Marlon Beckles with the spin move. And Tom, they've been relying on Beckles quite a bit here in the first quarter. It was Cameron Scott on the stop, and Ugart now four for seven passing in this first quarter. 3.15 to go in the opening quarter. John, it's flying by. Still no score here in Washington, D.C. Brad Harris's defense has bent, but they haven't broke. They've done a good job hanging in there. The offense hasn't really been able to move the football. Brad Harris, seventh year as defensive coordinator, a Roanoke firefighter.
for 10 years. We got a look at our referee cam earlier. And Edwards up the gut, look at him plow forward. Picking up excellent yardage there. Head coach Jeff Pastore talked about a rhythm, as did Marlon Beckles. Ugart, once he gets into a rhythm today, it's going to nothing, do nothing but benefit our team. And right now the Shields are in a rhythm in this drive as they keep banging away. Smash mouth football. They've established the run, Tom, which has opened up the passing game for Ugart as well. Twin receivers to each side. Ugart looking left. Passes caught by Hennen, his second of the game. He is stumped down after picking up eight yards. Nicely done there. That was Cameron Scott on the stop along with Todd Harris. And we spoke to Todd Harris during the week, John, and the Roanoke Rampage, a former Division II team of the NPSFL, won the national championship last season against the Dallas Defenders. They beat them. So Roanoke now at the Division I level and they're one and one on the season yeah they lost to dallas back in 2013 and it was a, a big redemption story for roanoke winning the division two national championship last season there's a run by edwards he is in the end zone for a tri-state touchdown nicely done by the shields moving forward wait a minute the one official ruled a touchdown we did, see the, we did see the signal. We did see the touchdown By the signal. line judge. Yeah, the line judge ruled touchdown. But they are going to mark it at around the three-yard line. So no no touchdown. Apologies, folks. A little confusion there on, on the field. Regardless, Tom, this has been an impressive drive by the Shields as we take a look at our referee cam. How cool is that? Man, right on the field, live. Ugart throws. Oh! That is incomplete. Hennon took a huge hit from Shiloh Beal. My goodness. Man, Shiloh Beal, I am shocked Hennon was able to get up from that one. Shiloh Beal teed him up. Maybe we could take another look at that hit by Shiloh Beal. So wait wait a minute. Apparently it was a touchdown and they just went for the two point conversion. The, the officials very confused on the football field right now. One signal touchdown but there was no motion by the head referee that it was a touchdown. Well we're glad that we caught it when we did. I would have liked to have brought that to you a little bit earlier. Yeah, that, uh, but there was only one signal on the field, so our apologies to you for that. But the two-point conversion is no good, and the yeah. score stays at 6 to nothing with 135 left to go in the first quarter. And Tom, Tri-State finally putting together an excellent series. They were stopped the first two times yep. and finally broke through. Jeff Pastore saluting his team there. Jamar Edwards with the touchdown rush. His first of the season. Rampage will receive as kicking off will be Thomas Woodburn for the black and silver. You know, Shiloh Beal, Tom, uh, with that hit on the two-point conversion is one of the players in the secondary that came over from the D.C. Generals, which has uh, unfortunately disbanded this season. But a big pickup for Roanoke in acquiring Shiloh Beal, who's a police officer in uh, Prince George County and a former member of the D.C. Generals. As on to kickoff for the Shields. We do not have a number 92 on the roster. Oh, no, yes, we do. It is David Hughes. Sam Edmonds on the return. He gets to the 40-yard line. Nice return by Edmonds. And he's brought down by number seven for the Tri-State Shields. Monte Cradle. Cradle in on special teams as well today. Rampage will take over down 6-0 with 126 to go in the opening quarter. Ro Roanoke, as we mentioned, their head coach is Zach Hayden, and we'll talk more about him when we come back from this commercial break here on the First Responders Network.
all of a sudden you saw the water coming up like over her mouth and over her nose. That's when I decided to get back on top of the vehicle. You're watching the National Public Safety Football League on FRN. Welcome back to tonight's National Public Safety Football League game here on the First Responders Network. Tom Scavetta joined alongside John Hefferton. Thank you one and all for joining us as the injured player gets helped off the field for the, the rampage. They're checking him on the sideline. Chisholm, one interception in this first quarter as his team is down 6 nothing. Twin receivers to each side. The back is MJ. He takes the handoff. He has some daylight. Look at him go, John. He picked up about three or four yards before Scarnani got there to wrap him up. Chisholm right, Chisholm left. Johnson right, Johnson left, Johnson right. If I'm the head coach for the Roanoke Rampage, Zach Hayden, you just keep running the ball. That's the best player on the field. And Johnson, a.k.a. MJ, shows you what he can do on that last play for Roanoke. So now it'll be second down and six from the 45-yard line, under a minute to go in the opening quarter. Trips to the left now for the Shields. Matthew St. Clair checks into the game, number 17. They hand off up the gut to MJ. He makes a couple players miss, and he trucked over Danny Perez, who finally brought him down. It should be enough for a first down, and Chisholm now saying, take that, Tri-State. You're showcasing your guy in Marlon Beckles. I can do the same. And Roanoke finally getting a little momentum of their own on this series as they trail six to nothing. As the clock winds down here in the first quarter. As five seconds, let's see if the Rampage get a playoff. It doesn't look like they will. They will, okay, so one play, Chisholm looks right. Caught, he got the foot in bounds. That reception is hauled in by Matthew Lewis Bell, and that is how the first quarter will end. Chisholm gets a completion for the Rampage. He just kind of threw it up there to Bell and said, go get it. Bell went up and got it, a very acrobatic catch by Bell. Yep. Who was able to bring it down at for the, the reception. At the end of one, the Shields lead the Rampage 6-0. That's the end of the first quarter. Let's step aside to meet David Ugart of the Tri-State Shields and Jamal Payne of Roanoke, and we'll be back in a moment at the start of the second quarter. My name is David Ugart um, with the U.S. Army Military Police. Been on the job for 10 years. I played quarterback for the Tri-State Shields. This is my third year going in. I've always been in the military because of uh, it's like a tradition. My father was in the military, which is uh, active. Uh, duty. I uh, love the idea of just helping people out and stuff. I'm all about that and how I live my life. I just want to give a shout out to my mother, my little sister, my father. Uh, I know he's been definitely be watching. And then a uh, shout out to my best friends, Justin, JJ, Donnie. Definitely a shout out to uh, my son, uh, Angelo. Love you. My name is Jamal Fain. I work for Lynchburg Police Department. Been with the department for about five, five and a half years now. I've been on the team for about three or four years now for the Roanoke Rampage. And 
I mainly play outside linebacker. I love what I do. It's, it's something that I feel, you know, very passionate about. Any way I can help out to give back in general, I'll do so. You're watching the National Public Safety Football League on FRN. Welcome back, folks, to Woodson Football Field here in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. It's the Tri-State Shields hosting the Roanoke Rampage. My name is Tom Scavetta, joined alongside John Hevernan. Quarter number two underway, Chisholm in a shotgun set. Twin receivers to each side, play fake, throws. Little out route to the right, caught by number 10, Sam Edmonds for his first catch. He's wrestled out of bounds by Nico Rodriguez. So a nice little set play there for Roanoke as they continue to pound away at the start of the second quarter and putting together a nice little drive of their own, trying to answer back. And it's all about rhythm. And I think the Tri-State Shields certainly established that with Beckles on their touchdown drive and Rampage trying to do the same with their big back number 20, number 13, Michael Johnson. As Chisholm, twin receivers once again here. MJ takes the handoff. He's got some room in front of him. Brought down from behind by Tri-State. A couple of defenders got in there. That was number 93. Richard Osborne on the stop. John MJ is running with a purpose. MJ left, MJ right, MJ up the gut. It's all working, especially here on this series for the Rampage. And I mentioned earlier, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, now, as much as Scarnati and Perez and the linebacking core D-line might be focusing on MJ, they're unable to stop him here on this series. Second down and five, ball at the 33-yard line. 90 seconds into the second quarter. Chisholm takes the high snap, handoff. MJ off tackle, he is stuffed. Nice tackling form there by Raheem Bradshaw who I got to speak with pregame, John, and he was all over this Roanoke receiving core, knowing that they would pose a real test today for these tri-stage shields, and he makes the stop right there, nicely done. Well, nobody got fooled on that one when it came to the tri-state defense, and we're now at third and six. And loss of one. Chisholm already with one pick in this game so far. The Roanoke City Sheriff's Office, police officer number four, Sean Chisholm, the quarterback for the Rampage, with a big play here at third and six on the 34 yard line. Third down and six, ball at the 34, John. Tri State showing zone, Chisholm surveys, takes a hard hit and right in front of his receiver, a little short. Nice QB hit there by Cookie. And Chisholm a little wobbly as he got up. I don't know if you noticed that, but yeah. he- uh, Taking some hits. Definitely a little bit wobbly, but this time he had plenty of time in the pocket and underthrew his intended receiver. And that was Sean Chisholm, which is gonna bring us to fourth down. And quickly, we'll go over the officials for today's game. The head ref is Mike Gaskill. Umpire Gary Kennard, who's also wearing the body cam. Head line judge is Randy Alexander. The line judge is Dominique Williams. And back judge is Wendell Holmes. Fourth and six, they're going for it once again, John. Trips to the right on this time. You gotta give, uh, tip my hat to Zach Hayden here, showing some guts on fourth down. Chisholm throws incomplete. They fail the fourth down attempt. Good pressure applied there by Ivan Manji, and the Shields will take over on downs. Great play by Ivan Manji. Able to get his hands on the football was number 10 for Roanoke, but was not able to bring it in. And that was uh, intended for the receiver for the Rampage, uh, Sam Edmonds. He's with the Virginia Department of Corrections. Tom, want to talk a little bit more about this police officer week here in D.C. It's been one heck of a week and uh, lots of dignitaries here to honor our fallen police officers all over the country and uh, a good turnout in D.C. all week long, culminating with our 
game of the week here in FRN, the NPSFL game of the week. 12-18 to go in the second quarter, first and 10 from their own 34-yard line, the Shields with an empty set here, five receivers, trips to the left, two receivers to the right. They throw a screen out to Beckles. He is decked hard, nicely there. Beautiful piece of tackling by the Rampage. That was number 47, Donovan Brown, out of the Virginia Department of Corrections. Well, the biggest licks of the game so far, Tom, have been handed out by the Roanoke Rampage, and another one right there. These guys are hitting hard and showing these Yanks uh, what they're all about, what wow. kind of brand of football played down here in Virginia. See the replay of that hard tackle too. And you know, quickly want to acknowledge your point on Police Week, John. This has been billed by both teams as the Police Week Memorial Game. DC is the meeting point. Every year they put up tents out in Tent City. Law, enfor law enforcement officers come down to celebrate the week. You Gart on the handoff here. No, he takes it himself. Deck wraps him up. Short yardage. Looked like a design play. You Gart got tripped up. I just want to give a, a mention to the United States Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, who was the MC at the candlelight vigil, which was very moving. And we're going to show you a little video of that later on in the broadcast. Uh, a very somber occasion, but something that has a lot of significance and a lot of impact, um, especially in these tough times we're living in today. Absolutely. For those of you folks unfamiliar with the Roanoke Rampage, they're from Roanoke, Virginia, a town of about 100,000 people. They play their home games in Salem, site of the Division Three National Championship game. They have a good relationship with Virginia Tech, who's donated numerous amounts of equipment to the Rampage, a team spread out in southwest and northern Virginia as Pastore cannot haul that one in. And what's special about the Rampage, John, is they're looking good defensively here, forcing a third, and, uh, fourth and long. They have guys uh, from the old Cleveland team, the Atlanta team, and four orphans from the DC team, including Shiloh Beal, who has been a big staple for this Rampage secondary. Absolutely, and another staple is Isaiah Persinger, who just absolutely shut down the best receiver, arguably, on Tri-State. Number nine, Nick Pastore. So we talked about the strength of the secondary for Roanoke earlier in the broadcast, and it's showing up big time here, especially in the play of Isaiah Persinger. And of course, you mentioned Shiloh Beal, who's had a couple of big hits today as well. Oh! It is a drop kick by the quarterback. It was blocked and it will roll nicely for the shield still rolling. It'll finally be, finally be touched by the center Ambrosio at the 31 yard line. So all is not lost there. That punt logged 32 yards, but still, John, the Rampage have come to play. Absolutely, but let's get back to that drop kick. What what would you call that, Tom? That That's was what unbelievable. It is, yeah. Rarely see that these days, but it seems to work for Tri-State as they back up the rampage to their own 20-31-yard uh, line. My guess would be is that Thomas Woodburn did not make the trip. I don't see him on the sideline anywhere. Which so it looks like Ugart will be handling the punting duties today or the drop kicking duties, depending on how you want to look at it. So number 92, David Hughes doing kickoffs as the Rampage will take over. Trips to their right, MJ the back to Chisholm's left. Chisholm looks left, throws, fires, drops. Now that's got to be held on to right there. You cannot drop that ball. Chisholm's had enough struggles so far in this first half. Um, Tom, just a little background about Roanoke. Uh, first time uh, we're covering this team. They, as you mentioned, switched from Division Two to Division One. I. I want to give a shout out to team president Jason Jamison Radcliffe, Todd Ferris, their general manager and defensive end, 6'40", 220 pounds, 49 years old, and a DEA government contractor. Zach Hayden, the head coach for six years, and the offensive coordinator and the special teams coordinator, Jay Good. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about those guys we got to talk through, uh, talk with during the week, especially Jamison and Todd Farris, also a player. John, those two were awesome. Uh, Terrific guys, them, very welcoming as well. And we hope we can cover a game next season down in Roanoke. It would uh, 
It would be terrific to get MJ down MJ gets away from one defender, still on his feet, finally brought down by Joseph Vallone and Sean Kern. All of that work just for a gain of two yards, but hey, it's better than no yards. And Tom, you know, you gotta look at the low center of gravity that Michael Johnson runs with and his ability to shift and create in small spaces mm -hmm. and finding that seam. You know, he's a he's he's a big guy, not a tall guy, but it's kind of like a, just a fire hydrant out there. And that quickness, a couple of yards here and there, it, it all begins to add up for Michael Johnson. And a good example of it there, despite just two yards on the play, that, which is going to bring us to third and eight. And he highlighted how good his vision is. He was a quarterback in high school down in Richmond, Virginia. Very patient when hitting the holes, as you saw right there playing with the team for at least four years now, eight years on the job, loves getting out there and working with kids in the communities as that pass is caught by DeAndre Brown and he's stopped immediately by Kern. That'll bring up fourth down for the rampage. Yeah, and you, know, you can't argue the arm strength for the rampage. Sometimes I almost think the ball is being thrown just a little too hard by Sean Chisholm, and that may sound odd, but why is the target there when you need eight, number one? Number two, with that amount of distance on a throw, he's really ripping it in there. And some of the receivers, receivers for the Rampage having trouble holding on. Baker, a short kick. Astori will just let it roll. Downed by the Rampage. And that was a punt of 37 yards by Trey Baker. Not bad, John. It, it got a friendly roll, but the Shields, once again, are controlling the field position. They may only have six points, but right now it seems like the combination of Edwards, Beckles, they're mixing in some passes. We've seen some good throws, the Cribs and Pastore and Hennon, too. They've controlled the tempo. And not a whole lot of offense, though, as we have 8-10 remaining here in the first half. We saw, we talked about these two teams being equally matched and it has been a defensive battle so far. Only one turnover. But hopefully uh, both of these teams might be able to start opening things up now with the filling out process is over. See, Tri-State tri likes to do the, uh, the dead ball snap. You see center Michael Ambrosio got to speak with him pregame he was an awesome chat as well says the team has good pass protection he's been a center since seventh grade a little fun fact about him as he guards passes wide for Hennon second down and 10 Ambrosio played his college ball at SUNY Brockport he says um, he's been on the job now for been on the team and the job for three and a half years and um, works on the same command as Robert Rivera and fun fact John Jeff Pastore was his center's first boss in the NYPD. That is too crazy. So many connections with both of these teams. Um, if you're just joining us, Tri-State consists of players from uh, both the fire department, the New York City Police Department, U.S. military, Secret Service, DEA, Special Agents, FBI, CIA, and we couldn't be more thrilled to have them all out here today. Olchovi catches the pass from Ugart. Nice wrap up there by the Rampage on second and long, and Olchovi could not get much cooking. And we had six Roanoke defenders pursuing that play, and it speaks volumes about not only a gang tackle mentality by the Rampage, but also guys not giving up on the play, Tom, and running both sides of the field just to uh, make sure they're backing their brothers up. And a good example of it there. Third down and six. Ball at Tri-State's 32-yard line. As Ugart here will have a four-receiver set. Keith Hennon is the fourth receiver, plays as an inline tight end. Typically will block, but on third and long here, he'll be out there as a receiver. Beckles to Ugart's left. He has time, pump fakes, throws to Pastore. It is caught on the run. Nicely done. He is trying to get past Shiloh Beal, and he fumbles the football, recovered by Beal. That ruins a beautiful play for the Shields. Wow, wow, John. 
And Shiloh Beal looked to appear to strip the football. As we take a look at it again, the left-handed Ugar going deep with his longest pass of the day. And it's a perfect strike to number nine Pastore. He gets stood up, tries to cut back to gain more yards after the catch. Double teamed and Beal right there strips the ball loose. It comes out and just like that, it is Roanoke Rampage as Roanoke catches a huge break on the big pass pass play by Ugart. And now it's the second turnover of the game so far. This time, it's the Shields coughing it up. Yeah, that ruined the 38-yard reception by Nick Pastore. Jeff mentioned he wants to take some shots down the field, and they did there. Unfortunately, Shiloh Beal just forced it out. Great job not giving up on the play as Chisholm completes a pass to Edmonds. Bumped out by Rodriguez. Pickup of a couple. And you know what I really liked about that pass from Ugart? He was composed. Granted, he had time to throw the ball, but it was a perfect strike from the left hander to number nine, Nick Pastore. And Tom, I guess it's just a good example of you've got to cover up that football with both hands, especially on the run after catch. And Nick Pastore was not able to hold on to that football. We talked to the Rampage during the week about their defense, and they mentioned that the secondary is the strength of this defense. They have a shutdown corner and Wesley Richer. They play a lot of cover, too. As that pass is nearly picked off by Bradshaw, Chisholm overthrew the receiver to bring up third and long here. But back to the point about the Rampage defense, a great rotation of defensive linemen, and that comes with the transition of being a Division I team now. They've set this up like they want to be legit. They want that Division I schedule, and they have been very, very tough. Have to give that Rampage defense a ton of credit. Absolutely. Chisholm trying to lead Edmonds on that last pass, but just a little too much. I talked to you earlier, Tom, about it's nothing to do with Chisholm's arm strength. He just maybe throwing the ball just a little too hard. So we are gonna take a time out here on the field with 5.59 remaining here in the second quarter. Tommy, I think we're gonna uh, go to a quick break and yep. come right we'll back. We'll take a quick break here on the First Responders Network. Be right back. Police Week. Every year in May, we gather in the nation's capital. From every corner of the country, police officers join together to honor and remember those we've lost in the line of duty. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the families our heroes leave behind, and we uphold our promise to never forget. Nearly 24,000 names adorn the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. These everyday heroes leave behind a legacy of service that we honor this week. Today, we gather for more than a game. Today, we gather to celebrate the lives of the brave men and women we've lost in service to their communities. Today, we play for our brothers to our left and to our right, and for the countless friends we've lost along the way. watching the National Public Safety Football League on FRN. John, a beautiful memorial video there of National Police Week to honor the fallen, all law enforcement across the country. Beautiful stuff. Absolutely. One of the reasons, uh, main reasons we're here this week. Chisholm throws, pass intercepted with one hand by Devontae Cradle. Holy smokes. That's the second pick for the Roanoke quarterback. And John, what an incredible acrobatic play by that defensive back. We have to get that on replay. Wow. The second interception thrown by Chisholm today. And let's take a look at it one more time. Chisholm rolling out to his left, lets it fly. 
and it's just absolutely sniped out of midair by the Shields. That was number seven for the Tri-State Shields with the interception. Yeah, Cradle with the beautiful one-armed catch, and the Shields have excellent field position here. 5.46 to go in the second quarter. Ball is at the, the Rampage 35-yard line. They're in a pistol formation. Beckles is the back. Hennon, the tight end. Olchovi in the slot. Pastore and Cribs are the receivers. Good tackle there made by Zach Deck. And John, we got to speak with Zach Deck. That guy has one heck of a motor. Yeah, he never stops going. He pursues the ball all over the field. Tons of speed, tons of intensity, hits hard, physical player. And loves what he does for a living, loves his teammates, and thinks uh, of everybody on this Rampage team as part of one big family. Certainly a, a big part of what we talked about prior to kickoff here today in D.C. We appreciate Zach's time. You know, awesome guy. His favorite thing to do as a police officer is to go out to elementary schools, have them learn more about law enforcement as that run up the middle there. And never really met anybody in his entire life that knows football better than Brad Harris, his defensive coordinator. So their relationship is special, but he's a guy about relationships. His head coach, Zach Hayden, has been instrumental to his growth and development here with the Rampage. He said he's never met a guy who knows more about the game of football than head coach Zach Hayden. We had an opportunity to talk Zach prior to the game as well and very likable guy and as Zach Dead said most people have forgotten more about football than Zach Hayden knows. Third down and seven. Ball to 32. Twin receivers for Ugart. He's on the run. Burton trying to drag him down from behind. It's going to be close. And absolutely no time for Ugart on that play as the Rampage came busting through the line on the blitz and were just absolutely suffocating Ugart, who somehow yet again escaped and got the first down on the play. Under four minutes to go in the half. Tri-State threatening again. John, it'll be interesting to see here if they take another shot at Pastore. There's Ugart. Rampage showing blitz. Here they come. Ugart, there's a flag on the field. This might be the first flag we've seen all game. Been pretty uh, clean, John. Right? Yeah, very clean, free. very clean, which is nice to see. Not always the case, but any flow that has been gained by other teams seems to get interrupted by a yet another turnover. So back-to-back -back turnovers on back-to-back -back series. This time, Tri-State trying to capitalize as they're now down to the 30-yard line, the 20-yard line, I should say, of Roanoke. Interested to see, do you think Tri-State should continue to pressure Ugart on these early downs? Well, he's getting pressured there and, and takes down this. hard. Pastore makes the catch, a 20-yard touchdown from Ugart to Pastore on the run to his left side. Beautiful pitch and catch. He was wide open. Wide open, but more importantly, Tom, Ugart had the composure and the wherewithal and knew he was going to get blasted, and he did, and yet he stuck in there, waited, was patient. The one thing Jeff Pastore said Ugart needs to be, we may see a coming out party here today for David Ugart. That was absolutely beautiful. Despite the fact that Nick Pastore, Nick Pastore was wide open, Ugart really impressed me on that pass right there. Pastore runs a lot of crisp routes, and we saw it right there as Tri-State will go for two here. It's 12-0 Tri-State. Let's see if they Going can get... Going for two again, Tom. Yeah. 
Empty set here. Beckles to the slot right. Pastore being double teamed. Ugart throws, fires, caught by Hennen for that the should, two point conversion. That should be a late hit, but Hennen does bring it in. And it's interesting, Tom. Tri State really made that look easy after the turnover. And I wonder now how much this secondary for Roanoke has been exposed due to some adjustments perhaps that Jeff Pastore has made. I think Pastore's made a lot of good adjustments offensively. When we found out that Masonette wouldn't be here, we wondered, well, where would Tri-State lean offensively? It's fallen a lot on Ugart and Pastore. Those two, our players to watch, it's fed right into our pregame analysis. Pastore, touchdown for the second straight game. And Pastore, yeah, he re really, really is the catalyst and has become an MVP caliber player for the Tri-State Shields and is showing it off again here in the first half, two weeks in a row for Tri-State. Uh, before we go to kickoff, Tom, I just wanted to mention the passing of uh, NFL Hall of Famer Jim Brown, widely considered one of the best running backs of all time in the National Football League. So I wanted to acknowledge that here. Is uh, also a guy who was very involved in, in civil causes and civil rights as... Um, he has certainly been an ambassador for the National Football League for, for many years. So our thoughts go out to Jim Brown passing Absolutely. away today to he and his family. Hughes kicks off. Edmonds on the run. Look at the move. He's got some daylight. Finally brought down by the Shields. Tom, that was from, Donovan Brown. From one side of the field yeah. to the other. Edmonds almost looked like he was going in slow motion up the sidelines and a huge... Huge return for Edmonds, and the Roanoke Rampage will have excellent field position with 2.46 to go in the half, trailing by two touchdowns. It's a 47-yard kickoff return for Edmonds, and we'll see what the Rampage can do. Chisholm has the interception. Saving the day was uh, Jason Lacayo for Tri-State. Yeah, we'll have to take a look and, and, and see what the Rampage can do here offensively. They have not proven that they could move the football too much yet as Scarnati comes running off late. Chisholm, three receivers lined up to the left. Interesting formation there as MJ will take the handoff off tackle, pushed out by Bradshaw, gain of two. Tom, excellent job by the left tackle on the offensive line for the Rampage really standing up the opposing player on the defensive line for Tri-State. A good, good push, especially on that play by Roanoke. And I'm seeing things starting to equal out a little bit there in the trenches, Tom. Offensive line perhaps finding a rhythm of its own for the Rampage. Brian Epperly. We actually ran into him in the hallway as we were leaving, John. A large man, to <laughs> say the least. Screen pass left to Edmonds, makes another catch. Pass Story and Bradshaw bump him out. That was short gain. Epperly, 350 pounds, I think. Is that what he said? Yeah, me? he said that. Yeah. 350, 665, <laughs> 64, six, something like that. Unbelievable. We were looking for the elevator. We were going the wrong way. <laughs> That's <laughs> Ran right. into Epperly, starting left tackle. Third and five upcoming for the Rampage. Let's see if they get one to Edmonds or Brown here. Those are the two primary cat catch passers, pass catchers for Rono. Well, he's got a. Uh, Three receivers to his right does Chisholm. So let's uh, look look in that direction. Oh, but they do the draw play, Tom. Yeah, I don't know. Didn't fool if anybody. Got a couple, but not enough for the first. To be fair, though, the pass attack has been struggling as Cookie made the stop on MJ. And to be fair, this is the spot on the field that you would typically go for it on fourth down, but instead they'll elect to punt with Trey Baker. Yeah, we want to give a shout out to Cookie Uwagiran, the 
NYPD third year police officer from the Bronx, New York, and Mount St. Michael product. So shout out to Cookie and Mount St. Michael in the Bronx, New York. I Walked the uh, PAT in that FD game, remember? He did. Brought all, it to overtime. All six foot, uh, all eight, of six foot eight of them. Timeout, Roanoke. So we will call a timeout. It's their second by the rampage. Tom, we're going to keep it right here. Uh, we got a nice halftime feature coming up on the, the president of the Roanoke Rampage, Jamison Ratcliffe, who's going to share a little bit more about the history of this team and, you know, not to give, uh, give it all away, but when you think about the transformation the Rampage have made back in the day, I think there was one season they were only playing with 15, 16 people. Um, and it's been amazing and remarkable to watch the growth of this Rampage team, uh, probably the deepest team they've ever had, and the team that's out there today, the 2023 version of the Rampage. Yeah, and we spoke to Jamison throughout the week. First year as president, been with the team for roughly eight years, vice president over the last two years, been a player since 2015, played cornerback and special teams. In 2009, this is how Roanoke got started. A gentleman by the name of Todd Stone started following the FDNY of New York City. Very big football fan and got into contact with people to start this organization. Jamison, a big part of that. A military police officer with the U.S. Army for the past 20 years. I want to thank Jamison and all these first responders for their service as that punt by Baker goes out of bounds, only logged about 27 yards. Jamison also just loves this team. He loves this game. Jamison, a couple of tours overseas uh, during his military phase overseas to both Iraq and Afghanistan. And we want to thank Jamison for all of his hard work and his service in the United States Army. Jamison Radcliffe, the president of the Roanoke Rampage, and we will get to know Jamison a lot more during our halftime feature. Coming up in just uh, about 56 seconds. We also got to know a lot about Todd Ferris as well, the general manager, first year as GM, plays defensive end, originally from Roanoke, now lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He drove up from North Carolina last night. Another very nice guy. Let's see if Tri-State just runs the clock out here with Edwards. Stumped down by a couple of defenders. It looked like Deck and Price got in the middle of that one. So Tom, as the seconds continue to tick off here, this really could have gone either way here in the first half despite Tri-State with the 14-0 lead, a couple of big turnovers. The strip ball on the reception from Pastore, a big break for Roanoke. But I think with the right adjustments, Roanoke can get right back in this thing to start the second half. Only a two possession game. Their defense has done a good job hanging in there. Another handoff to Edwards, brought down by Jamal Payne, number 21, and that will be the final play of the first half at halftime. Tri-State leads Roanoke by a score of 14 to nothing. We'll return with second half coverage in just a few minutes. Stay tuned as our very own John Heffernan had the pleasure of speaking with Roanoke team president Jamison Ratcliffe and we'll meet two more players, Roanoke linebacker Adam Burton and Tri-State linebacker Tony Scarnati here on the First Responders Network. Adam Burton. Outside linebacker for Rono Grand Page. Uh, I've been with the team since 2016. I've been in law enforcement for 18 and a half years. Uh, the charity that uh, Rono Grand Page plays for is called Street Street. It's a youth outreach program in Rono City, Virginia. The best part of being on this team is it's great to be able to go across the country, different cities, different places, play other teams, meet other first responders. Because at the end of the day, we all love the same thing. We all love our communities and we all love football. I'm not gonna let nobody die on my watch. Hey, is this weird here? Get out! You never know what you're gonna see the second you get out of the car. Stop! 
Let me buy your bike, man. Hey, I got him inside. I wasn't thinking about the danger. I got you, hold on. Every once in a while, you have an opportunity to truly make a difference. Give me your other hand! This isn't a job to me, this is a way of life. Ladies and gentlemen, in the flesh, it is the president of the Roto Grand Page, Mr. Jameson Radcliffe in the house. From my house, your house, to putting bad guys in the big house, Jameson, to hopefully taking it to the house. Friday night, Washington, D.C., under the lights, police week. We got so much going on, Jameson. First of all, I can't thank you enough for joining us. What a treat, not only for me, seeing you guys for the first time, but also for our viewers on First Responders Network. Jameson, welcome to Halftime. How are you feeling, and uh, what's it like to be the president of the Roanoke Rampage? Well, first off, thanks for having us. Uh, we've been big fans of you guys for a while, and we're excited that we're here talking to you and getting to express our team a little bit and tell you exactly who we are. Um, it feels great to be the president of a, such a an awesome organization. I couldn't be happier with what the team is doing and has been doing for the past couple of years. We've been around since 2009. We've uh, been fortunate enough to be invited to four different Division II national championships in 2013, 2016, 2018, but finally securing a victory in 2022 for the first time. So breaking through that barrier, awesome feeling. Well, listen, you were involved in the premier game of the week, and I like how uh, some have billed it as the Police Week Memorial Game of the Week on uh, FRN. Kind of a cool honor to to be participating in that. And in the bigger picture, if you could talk a little bit about what Police Week means to you for first responders, you being a military police officer, um, and it's centric to Washington, D.C. this year, so Lots of festivities. There's going to be a candlelight vigil on Saturday night. And uh, what does it mean to you to be a part of that? You know, it is a remembrance for the fallen. It's the police week. You know, a lot of people don't know this story. Uh, number 28 in 2009, our inaugural season, was worn by Adam Childress. And he was a Roanoke County police officer here, a great friend of me, a great friend to the team. Uh, he suited up for practice, but never made it to the first game in 2010. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away on the job, and still to this day, number 28 has never been issued out to a player on our team. So it gives us a chance this weekend to not just showcase who the Rock Rampage is, but gives us a chance to showcase who Adam Childress is. I know charitable initiatives are a very important piece to the Roanoke Rampage organization to the Roto Rampage program. Speak a little bit about one of them in particular. One that comes to my mind is Bigs in Blue and um, what, how that came about and, and uh, share share a little bit about it with us. Absolutely. Bigs in Blue was actually created and organized by our former quarterback, Mr. Ryan Brady, who is a detective with Lawrence City Police Department. It was a program he started because it dealt with inner city use. It came across his desk and he immediately ran with it to the portion of Good Morning America actually did a cover story on it, brought him up to New York, and actually partnered with Big Brother Big Sister to become a national organization. With guys coming in from all different parts of the South, combined with um, the different agencies that you have participating, how would you describe that culture of your team and maybe some of the philosophies that you like to incorporate and pass along to your players? Well, our culture is professionalism. That's the first thing that we teach when we come through the door. Um, we're going to love each other. We're going to respect each other, but we're also also going to respect the team across the sidelines or the field from us. Um, I expect my team to be as hard-hitting and competitive as the next team we come across. Uh, it's a little hard to get some of the guys to practice, especially if they live in Atlanta or Cleveland or D.C., but... We know when they get to game day, they 
they work and communicate very well with the guy that's signing them and everything has been fallen into play to where it's worked out beautiful so far. Well, the, we've covered a little bit off the field and that's terrific and it's so great to hear. Um, on the field, in short order, you guys have been pretty remarkable. You mentioned the Division II championship last year with a big win against Dallas, the team you had lost to back in 2013 in the championship game. That must have been a great feeling of redemption but not only to take the championship in the MTSFL at Division II. Oh, it was a tremendous feeling. You know, some of the guys that's been around since since the beginning and being able to get that redemption in, everything had to fall into play perfect, and it was reliving 2013 all over again. So the only difference is, is we had to go to Dallas in 2013. This year, we or last year, excuse me, we hosted Dallas in Roanoke, Virginia. It was just an experiment and excitement for everybody as Roanoke got to see the Roanoke Rampage finally bring home that trophy. Well, you admittedly have had some challenges, Jameson, with recruiting since you're dealing with several different agencies, U.S. Marshals, military, police, fire, EMTs. Um, it's affected your depth, quite honestly, and going up against some of the big boys, some of the featured teams. You mentioned the fire department of New York. Um, how has that been a challenge and what do you do for, from a recruiting point of view? When it comes to recruitment, anything works. Uh, we, we will send out a Facebook flyer to different departments. We will go through academies and give a 30 minute presentation on who we are and what we want to do. We have players geographically in four different states. If you include DC as a state, you know, I know it's a district. Uh, we had players from Cleveland. We had players from Atlanta Police Department. We had players from uh, Washington, D.C. We had players from North Carolina and through the great Commonwealth of Virginia as well. The camaraderie, to me, it's one of the most authentic threads that I have seen in sports. It's almost as a result of what you do off the field and the familiarity that you guys share that not a lot of people can claim to be able to share in the same way based on what you do. At the end of the last broadcast that we had, the fire department and Tri-State Shields, fire department won it overtime. Both teams celebrated after the game together and were singing songs and their families were uh, interacting and their kids, young kids, and the, the other side's young kids were playing together. It was really a beautiful thing to see. Um, is that important to you, and, and do you agree with um, the camaraderie and the importance of it? Oh, I think that's everything. Um, you know, first time getting to play or meet any of the FDNY guys and hearing them out after the game singing their song, it's just a moment I couldn't explain. They give you that, that warm feeling in your heart. I know just from this league alone, I have... So many friends throughout the country that I know that I could call at any time if I'm passing through to grab lunch or dinner or whatever, and they can do the same thing here at Roanoke. One of the things that I really do appreciate is when we line up at our 50-yard line and go through, that's the first thing we do after we say our good games is intermingle, have a word from each of the team's presidents, and then say, say a prayer together as a family because at the end of the day, that's what this league is, and that's how important that, that this is in the league. Very, very well said. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamison Radcliffe, the president of the Roanoke Rampage. We thank you so much for joining us, Jamison, here at halftime. And, folks, we're going to go to break. We'll be back right after this. My name is Officer Tony Scarnati. I'm a police officer with the Nershaw Police Department and I've been a police officer for seven years. I've been on the team since we initiated in 2020, so it's the first year. And I've been a linebacker for the last four years with them. And I've worked my way up to head cap. I want to say hi to my wife, Gina, my kids, Anthony, Nico, and Ava, and uh, my mom and dad if they're watching. You're watching the National Public Safety Football League on FRN. At halftime, folks, the Tri-State Shields lead the Roanoke Rampage by a score of 14 to nothing. My name is Tom Scavetta. 
Joined alongside John Heffernan. John, overall thoughts on that first half? It seemed to be pretty slow at first, but things picked up rather quickly. Yeah, certainly a back-and-forth affair. Got to credit both defenses for hanging in there and doing a good job, but it really all came down to turnovers, Tom. Chisholm throwing two picks, and that seems to have made uh, the big difference here in the first half as we take a look back. Yeah, let's take a look at the highlights. So this should be the first turnover. And it's picked off there by Vega. Vega runs to the other side of the field and he's brought down. Which gave the ball back to Tri-State. And a nice Edwards run up, up the middle. Between those linemen, good blocking. And this one boggled the mind, wide open. Nick Pastore, he gets tied up, though, tries to cut back, and he's stripped by Shiloh Beal. Beal then oh, gets the fumble recovery after the strip to give the ball back to the rampage. And here's another pick by Chisholm, this one taken by Cradle. Really good acro acrobatic play. Chisholm needs to take better care of the football there. Here's a look at the last one, John. This play was very impressive. Rolling out to his left was Ugart, and he finds Mr. Everything number nine, the coach's son, Nick Pastore. So, Tom, 14 to nothing. You know, I, obviously both teams are going to go to look, make some adjustments at halftime. Uh, who has stood out for you for Roanoke despite being challenged uh, offensively today? I think Zach Deck's been Im Im very impressive for the Rampage, stuffing the run a lot for... Tri-State, it's been a little easier without Miguel Mason Ed, but credit to Beckles and Edwards. A good battle in the trenches, but the Rampage have held their own. They haven't give up that big play that's really hurt them in that first half. Absolutely. Well, it's 14 nothing here in Washington, D.C. National Police Week. Wanted to talk a little bit about the charities uh, for both of these teams. Um, let's start first with Roanoke. They have so many different things that they've got their hands on as including the Special Olympics Torch Run, Bigs in Blue, which is fostering kids in the Virginia area uh, for a mentoring sh mentoring program similar to Big Brothers, Big Sisters. And um, you got to give credit where credit is due, Tom, to some of these charities that Roanoke's working on. And their on. main partner this year, the Straight Street Ministry, helping kids and, you know, maybe with some issues, helping them uh, stay off the streets and, you know, monitoring the best care for children in these communities in the Roanoke and I would say southwestern Virginia area, northern Virginia communities like that. And, you know, all of these first responders deserve a ton of credit today. Um, we know the Tri-State Shields have the uh, FDNY Widows and Children's Fund. Um, they do a lot of work as well. Um, Pop Warner, uh, they also Derby High School as well for Tri-State. So a lot of charity work done by both teams. And again, why yes, the football is what people love to watch on TV. You can never forget why they play this game. Play for a cause, play for a purpose, as Jamison Ratcliffe put it the other day. Mm -hmm. So very, very impressed by the amount of money that's been raised by the NPSFL over the past 25 plus years. Over $100 million have been raised since 1998. And a real spotlight we're going to have for you, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but not too early to start teasing the Fun City Bowl coming up on June 3rd. Tom, the Fire Department of New York and the New York City Police Department, always one of the marquee matchups, and we certainly look forward to bringing that to you and UNFR in this season as well. Yeah, the Fun City Bowl should be a lot of fun. Those two teams, we'll talk more about that in the fourth quarter, but um, I'm very excited right now to see how Roanoke responds in the second half against Tri-State because in their first two games, they never really faced that much adversity early on. I mean, they shut out LAPD, but in this game against Tri-State, you're starting to see the pieces of the puzzle put together for these shields. Absolutely. Not only that, lots on the line this weekend in general throughout the NPSFL, as we had mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Tri-State kind of playing for pride here today, but still mathematically in the equation, is Roanoke, as are the two premier teams in the league, New York City Fire and New York City Police, both in action this weekend. And we'll step aside for a quick break. 
It's the second half when we come back on the First Responders Network. I was on my way to another call, and I saw an overturned car. Hello? Hey. I'm just glad I was at the right place at the right time. I was put there for a reason. You're watching the National Public Safety Football League on FRN. Welcome back to our nation's capital here in Washington, D.C., site of tonight's NPSFL football game. The 0-2 Tri-State Shields lead the 1-1 one one Roanoke Rampage 14 to nothing at halftime. My name is Tom Scavetta, joined alongside John Heffernan in that first half. The two touchdowns were scored, the first by Jamar Edwards and the second by Nick Pastore, a 20-yard touchdown catch, and that is where we're at. Tri-State converted a two-point conversion, hauled in by Keith Hennon. And we're underway here, Hughes, a wobbling pooch kick fielded by the Shields. Looks like Edmonds got it, and he stumped down at around the 40-yard line. And, John, this is excellent opening field position for Roanoke. Tom, both sides have had great field position all game long. And this no exception for Roanoke, as they are going to have to get going here offensively. We'll take a look at this revamped Roanoke post halftime <laughs> offense to see what Hayden has up his sleeve to try to bust these guys out of their slumber as it were as far as offensive numbers are concerned let's see what the rampage can do looks like they might have a new quarterback in the game we'll get to that in just a moment you're right they do and the handoff is taken Jaquez Worley Jr. on the quarterback keeper. So there's the there's the biggest adjustment what we've seen so far, and it's a big one. The quarterback for the Roanoke has been replaced, at least for this series. And the head coach has seen enough for the rampage. Zach Hayden saying. Uh, we got to get this team going in any way we can. Zach Hayden, also the offensive coordinator, so definitely pulling the plug on Chisholm, at least for this drive, as Worley Jr. took that first keeper for three yards, second down and seven, ball at the 44-yard line. So let's see if the athleticism and mobility can help. The rampage here, look at this bomb. It is incomplete. <sighs> Getting tugged from behind, though, was the receiver. It is a penalty flag coming. And it's going to go against Tri-State. Like uh, Nicholas Rodriguez was on the coverage there. Got a tug of that jersey. I got to tell you, though, Matthew St. Clair had a head of speed. And got his hands on the football and really should have caught that ball, Tom. He should have, but it was great, great coverage. Unfortunately, there was also contact, but hold on. Did they pick this one up? So we'll we thinking. thought it was going to go against Tri-State, but right, well, now they're moving out the sticks. So not getting a lot of clarity from the officials at this point. It's like a, a, a holding penalty, likely 10-yard holding on the defense. So it, in fact, is against Tri-State, but not the pass interference that we thought it may be. We'll take a look here. Trips to the right for the Rampage. Worley on the run. He's carrying that ball very lightly. He's tripped up. Scarnati was in there. Tom, I know you're a WWE fan. It's kind of like in a tag team match. Worley gets tagged and comes into the ring, and he is just like gangbusters yeah. out there. He's come out of the gate flying here in the second half. My goodness. Yeah, he's done a really good job. And, you know, this Rampage team, very similar to Tri-State. They don't get as much practice time uh, throughout the course of the week. Guys spread out all over the state of Virginia. To tell you how big the state of Virginia is, Tri-State is geographically closer to D.C. than Roanoke, mileage-wise. So Jaquise Worley Jr. 
Like a whirling dervish. Ooh, that nearly passes. has that yeah. one picked off, Tom. Good break up there made by the Shields. Whirly, I, I love the kind of the quick drop back there, Tom, and just unleashing it, trying to catch Tri-State napping. A quick, a quick drop, couple of steps drop, and bam. Definitely a different style than the starter, number four, Sean Chisholm. So af after this drive, we'll have a quick announcement. And uh, Roanoke here faced with a third down and eight ball on the Tri-State 44-yard line. And I got to tell you, this center for Roanoke is an absolute beast. Will Maddy, number 61 out of the Western Virginia Regional Jail. This is a bomb down the field to Edmonds, incomplete over his head. <laughs> this Fourth down. guy is absolutely letting it fly. Yeah. Where were they keeping Worley Jr.? He is absolutely fearless. We'll bring up fourth and long, though. The rampage continue to be sluggish offensively. And um, John, we'll throw it to you. Well, Tom, the third quarter is brought to you by OfficerPrivacy.com. First responders, do you know you may have dozens of online profiles that could put you and your family's personal information at risk? Delete unwanted profiles by going to Office Privacy, OfficerPrivacy.com and protect your family today. Awesome stuff, John. Thank you very much. As Trey Baker's punt gets another friendly roll. Punt of the game. 34 yards. Close to it. Downed at the 11 or 10 yard line. So, Tom, are you surprised at all by, I, you know, three turnovers? Not the worst thing in the world uh, as this yeah. season has progressed. Special teams uh, has been uh, a, bane of, a bane of a lot of teams' existences in this season. We haven't seen too much. Uh, too much negativity from either of those areas from from both teams what uh what do you think roanoke needs to do here to uh get things going starting to think roanoke needs to establish the running game and win the trenches battle that's the only way back in this game i think there's still enough time you can run the football and get back into it still a lot of time left in this third quarter as uh Nice tackle made there by the Rampage. You know, Tom, they've had, Roanoke's had glimmers of real solid play. It's just been a little bit too inconsistent in order to maintain a pace, yeah. maintain a rhythm. A couple of big plays here and there, but it just hasn't been enough as Tri-State continues to pitch a shutout. Uh, this time, they have the ball yet again deep in their own end, and it's already second and eight so yeah i gotta say though ugard has impressed me he continues to make strides uh as this season goes on uh, as evidenced by that past to past story really showed so much patience in the pocket taking a big hit past story with the touchdown but ugard has impressed holds himself to a much higher standard he's under duress here he escapes the throw over the middle of the field in dangerous territory, incomplete. That'll bring up third and long, and I'm not happy there if I'm Jeff Pastore. No, especially throwing it right into the middle of the field as Ugart did. And certainly going to have to see Ugart. Ugart. I keep saying that, Tom. It's Ugart. It's a tough one. A lot of. A lot, of, a lot of tongue twisters today with both of these rosters. But yeah, a lot of uh, coaches on Roanoke, just to clarify. Zach Hayden is the head coach. Zach Deck is the defensive lineman. Brad Harris is the defensive coordinator. Todd Harris is the assistant defensive coordinator. <laughs> and then there's Jamison Ratcliffe, <laughs> the team president. Third and eight. Throw caught by Pastore. Not going to be enough. He'll be short of the first down. Was that Nick that hung out to that, or was that number 22? I believe it was Nick. 
Well, anyway. Looked like a big guy, but him and Old Trophy were in the same area. Absolutely. They're going to have to kick it away, Tom, on fourth down, which will give Roanoke excellent field position and another shot at getting the ball into the end zone. Well, look at this. Wow, this is a huge moment in this game. It is fourth and one from their own 19, and the offense is out there on the football field. Jeez. They did this not could be bring a, out a oh, punter. Man. Well, Maybe Thomas Woodburn might, is not here. Well, it could be the drop kick again. Let's see. And we'll take a look. You guard. Twin receivers to each side. Altrovi jumped. False start, and this will make them what rethink that. What is Jeff that. Pastore thinking here, Tom, on fourth down? You're kind of giving away points. He's livid right now. And now they're going to have to punt. I think the thinking is you don't have Woodburn. It's fourth and one. You've been dominating the line of scrimmage. Why not give Why it a not shot? Why not give it a shot? I guess, but from your own 19? I guess Jeff. you're up 14 and he wants to roll the dice. And I think Pastore knows that the second half has really separated the men from the boys this season for the Tri-State Shields. They've been able to hang in every game they've been in until just kind of giving it away right at the end. Sideways punt there, fielded by Edmonds. I believe Keith Hennon was the one who punted that football. No, it was Ugart. So he it was Ugart it. again. That's the second time. Ugard has kicked away on fourth down. <laughs> Unbelievable. Next man up mentality continues to try state, continues for tri state. Folks, I uh, just want to quickly shout out our first responders network. If you haven't already, go download the FRN app now for the best game experience and access to an exclusive collection of first responder content. That is the First Responders Network. Streaming today's game, want to thank everybody for tuning in. And this pass is caught by Bell. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. That's a gain of 12. Well, somebody got a hand on it. So rather be lucky than good on that play. And it's first down. That was for Roanoke. That was Matthew Lewis Bell, originally from Bluefield, West Virginia. Now works for the Virginia Department of Corrections. Almost heaven. West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountains. All right, I'm not going to Hollywood, Tom, clearly. <laughs> First down and 10 from the Tri-State 32-yard line. MJ takes it, slammed down by Perez nicely. But MJ is able to pick up about two or three. He, he is tough, Tom. MJ, love watching this guy run. And one of the most soft-spoken, well-mannered young men I've come across throughout my travels in the NPSFL. Super respectful. And it was, as so many of these guys are, Zach Deck was another one that really stood out to me. And it's been an honor to get to know these guys over the last couple of days and this week heading into the NPSFL game of the week. Michael Johnson, of course, with the Lynchburg Police Department. Matthew St. Clair checks in the game. Virginia Department of Corrections, number 17. He is split out to the left along with DeAndre Brown. It is Edmonds and Lewis Bell to the right. That one is thrown in the dirt, taking a hit there. I mean, he it's was Worley. just absolutely freight trained by number 47 for Tri-State. That was Jason Lacayo. Woo. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It is not for the weak of heart out on that gridiron tonight. There's been some big, big hits and this has been a physical game. Well, this is Roanoke's chance to get back in it. Third down and seven. Ball at the Tri-State 29. 8.19 to go in quarter number three. They trail 14 to nothing. Four receivers set, twins to each side. The back next to Worley Jr. is MJ. Worley Jr. looking, fires, caught by Lewis Bell. He breaks one tackle 
He's finally stumped down by pass story, and that is a Roanoke first down. Man, excellent job, and this kid continues to impress the replacement quarterback for Roanoke and Pastore in on the tackle yet again for Tri-State. Gain of 20 for Lewis Bell. That's his third catch of the game. It'll be first and goal from the nine-yard line. Under eight minutes and running to go in quarter number three. And this is their shot right now, Tom. Absolutely. Looking for a second-half comeback here. So Jacquees Worley really making a big impact here in, the, here in the third quarter. Worley Jr. takes the snap, heaves back corner of the end zone. It is incomplete, intended for Edmonds. Past story on the coverage. Second and goal upcoming in. It was actually Adam Burton. I'm sorry, number six, Sean Kern. Oh, we haven't seen, uh, we haven't seen Sean Kern's as much name as, as name as much as we usually do, Tom. Sean Kern was a little banged up in that FDNY game. Remember, there was twice in the second half. I think he went down. He so did. Great to see him playing just 13 days later. The hits these guys absorb on the football field, they definitely take a toll on their bodies, being that a lot of these guys are moving throughout the course of the day in their regular work week as first responders. Twin receivers to each side for Worley Jr., MJ is the running back. He surveys over the middle of the field. Ooh. Incomplete. Intended for Lewis Bell. Good coverage by the Shields. And Lewis Bell just went airborne in that play. Guy was able to get his hands on the ball and injured on the play or at least shaken up. This, this or, or a couple of Tri-State players. This might be Sean Kern, John. It is. Oh, my gosh. It is Kern. We were just talking about it, too. And, you know, you, you hate to see that. Third and nine. You know, don't forget, we've got guys out on this field today. The defensive end for Roanoke, 49 years old. And, of course, I'm talking about uh, number, who's 49? Todd Ferris. Yep. We'll get to that thought in a moment. We're just going to step aside for a quick injury timeout here on the First Responders Network. North Las Vegas has one of the hardest academies. This is nothing. A 10 minute mile? You guys should be able to do that blindfolded. If you can't do a 10 minute mile, you're gonna have problems. You need to fix your problems. You're watching the National Public Safety Football League on FRN. John, we were just talking about Todd Farris and a guy who helped put this team together as the general manager and defensively, Roanoke's done their job today. Now let's see if the offense can help them out. Worley Jr. on the run on third and goal. He still has the football. Caught! Touchdown, Lewis Bell, a nine-yard strike. Holy smokes, it looked like the play was done. And draped all over the quarterback on that play, number 55, Robert Rivera, like a wetsuit and still able to get the pass off, Worley Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, Roanoke on the board. Can you believe it? 7-11 to go in the third quarter. Folks, we got a ball game. Unbelievable, John. It, that play, correct me if I'm wrong, but it had a similar feel to the Tremaine Wilson touchdown in the FDNY Tri-State game where the pass was deflected. It was a lollipop throw, and it was caught in the end zone. So that ball had a lot of hang time. Low snap. The extra point by Baker is good. So the score is now 14-7. to Roanoke is on the board. They cut the deficit in half. Sean Chisholm benched for Worley Jr., but... Let's give Chisholm some credit. He was in there for the hole. That was a low snap. He hand handled it very nicely. Chisholm, no complaining out of, out of Chisholm there. I got, I got to do what I got to do. But yeah. for the VIP yeah. of the game right now, the MVP of the game, I should say, he's got to be head coach Zach Hayden. Rolling the dice yeah. and getting Jacques Worley Jr. to get things going, stir things up, and he has done just that. 
The Roanoke Grand Page are on the board, 14-7. Tri-State holding on to the thinnest of margins. Yeah, and John, I've got to tell you, Tri-State was the team that played with more of an urgency in the second half against the fire department. Here it's reversed. It's Roanoke playing from behind. I gotta say that must have been a pretty uh, intense half for uh, halftime locker room situation for Rona because they do look like a different team, uh, led by a new field general who can both run and throw the football more in the mold of number zero for Tri-State Ugart. Baker's kickoff, line drive, end over end, caught. By the upman Beckles, he's across the 45, down at the 49 by Donovan Brown, and that is where the Shields will take over. And a nice return by Marlon Beckles up to the 49-yard line. And Tri-State will do their best to answer back and get another uh, two-score cushion. But we'll see. The secondary has shown its holes, Tom, for Roanoke today. But uh, overall, they've held up pretty well. Yeah, their scheme's been pretty good. And, John, we spoke to Brad Harris earlier this week. Been with the team since the very first day in 2009. First game this year they played against FDNY was the first game that Farris missed in 46 years of his life. First football game he ever Isn't missed that incredible? as a coach. Absolutely amazing. That catch was brought down. Uh, received the reception made by number two, Beckles. Yep. Beckles very involved in the pass catching game. Beckles has shown so much versatility tonight. In the in the absence of Miguel Masonet, I think Miguel had some family commitments and I want to congratulate Miguel on the, the birth of a new baby not too long ago so congratulations to the Masonette family and it'll be interesting here to see what the whistle is they're taking a look the head referee Gaskill is talking to Beckles and they'll reconvene 12 men on uh Roanoke, penalties declined. Uh, so Tri-State, second down and four. Shotgun set. Ugart hands off Edwards. Off tackle, spins away. He has enough for the first down. Pushed forward by Hennen as he lunges inside the 40 down to the 37. Gain of eight. And Tom, I can't say enough about Jeff Pastore and the amount of equal responsibility he has given to both Edwards and Beckles. And I think he's played both of those guys beautifully this evening here in Washington, D.C. As another impressive drive is being put together here by Ugart and the Tri-State Shields. First and 10 ball at the Roanoke 37. Passes caught by Hennen in the hitch. And this has to be a lead. We got a little here. bit of a fight. Scrape breaking out in the backfield. That's got to be an ejection. Yeah, uh, oh my gosh. Cameron Scott's gone. He's that gone. has got to be an ejection. He just flipped a line. And these guys are our rate, and he has every right to be. Wow. Cameron Scott is gone. You know, number 65 for the Tri-State Shields was absolutely thrown the left guard. up into the air, came down hard, and Tom, that's very, very dangerous. Yeah, Dartre Belk has every right to be frustrated right now, but he has to keep his cool. Your team is in the lead, 14-7. to You're driving down the football field. You're about to advance 15 yards forward to the 22-yard line near the red zone. You don't want to lose your cool here. I understand you know, it's a Bel difficult situation. It's very Bel unsafe. Belk is lucky to come away uninjured on that yeah. play. At least it seems that way. And showed a lot of composure. He's got every right to be upset. Can we take a look at that again? So we're going to keep it. But look, the coaches are still 
talking to Belk, saying, you know, keep your cool, as I'm not sure Belk is going to walk well, towards the sideline. The, the side officials line. are talking it over. Both coaching staffs have come all the way out onto the field for both Tri-State and Roanoke. I have never seen a player flip like that before I mean, in it, a live it, it, football and, and, game. And Belk is not a small person. <laughs> I mean, this is... Yeah. Um, Unbelievable. That's not... This is not a good scene, but I will say that Roanoke cut the deficit in half. Yes, Tri-State had good field position, but they were on their way to clung back into this game, and this could completely turn things back into the Shields' favor, and this is not a good look. Zach Hayden trying to keep his team composed here. Brad Harris, the defensive coordinator. Todd Harris, the assistant defensive coordinator, all out there. And we'll get the penalty announcement here. If Scott wow. is not ejected, I think, I think Pastore... I don't think I've ever be, seen anything like yeah. that in my life. It was We talked about it's WWE unsafe, unsafe. earlier in the broadcast, joking around. That was, that was something right out of the world wrestling entertainment. Yeah, you can't do that. Although there was nothing entertaining about it. No. Ugart displaying good leadership here. He was the one that was um, wrestled to the ground on that play. Yeah, the, the way far away from the play, 20, 25 yards away, I noticed Ugart was going at it and coming to protect his cor their quarterback were a couple of players from Tri-State and then all hell broke loose. Excuse my French, but it was, uh, it was hellish out there for sure as both sides got involved and bodies were flying. Tom, did you see anybody else that was involved as far as the main instigator of that from Roanoke? No, I I only saw number 20, Cameron Scott, who is somehow still on the football field right now. Um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see how it unfolds here. As Dartre Belk is on the sideline with his team, Scarnati trying to calm him down and We'll resume play here. So it doesn't appear. Were these offsetting penalties? But why weren't the penalties? This has to be called. my guess. Offsetting. Why? Anyway. So basically, nothing happened. It, uh, but it looks like the ball was at the 37. It's back to the 49. Okay, so it was a personal foul on the Shields. That's what they're calling on Dartre Belk. Second and 22, pass incomplete. Deck with a nice clean quarterback hit there on Ugart. Deck's been impressive all game, John. Deck has definitely stood out. His speed especially. He's got the freedom to roam around, although very responsible on the end for Roanoke. Yeah, um... Tri-State here forced with a third and 22. And, you know, I don't blame Jeff Pastore for, you know, being very un unhappy right now. Um, it's just not a safe play. But nevertheless, you have to continue the football game. You have to, and I hate to say that, you have to somewhat forget about that play and move on. You just hope Belk is okay, your quarterback is okay, and move on. The game is still within reach. Third and 22, you guard. Dances around. He's going to take off. Scott wrapped him up and took a hard hit. He'll gain some good yardage, John. He did not get back to the original line of scrimmage, though. I liked how he stepped up in the pocket, Tom, created yeah. a little bit more space for himself. And once again, defensively, number 88, Zach Deck in on the play. That kid is a beast. So I wonder if Belk was the one that was ejected. Well, I, I, I'll have to take another look at it because I thought Belk was the, the recipient of, of what appeared to be a body slam. I mean, we both saw it. <laughs> Beckles is on to punt here. Look at this. Beckles will give it a shot. 
Nice sky nice high. Punt. Yeah, you know what? A lot of hang time. Look at that. Not a friendly bounce, though. Good job by Kern and the Shields downing that ball before it, it took an unfriendly bounce back in the other direction. But Excellent punt by Marlon Beckles. Certainly uh, in the conversation, Tom, as one of our players of the game. I know it's early, but he has been all over the field today for Tri-State. I want to give a quick shout out to Todd Harris as well, Roanoke's assistant defensive coordinator who called the plays for the first two games this season will take over as the full-time defensive coordinator next season, learning under an excellent football mind in Brad Harris, who is a phenomenal coordinator. They are not related, just to uh, clear it up for um, the non-Roanoke fans listening. Brad went from a player to an assistant coach to the head coach to the defensive coordinator. He has had his footprints on this team for quite some time. And the Rampage John, they got the ball back. Let's see what Worley Jr. could do. Pass caught by Brown. And look at Tony Scarnati all over him. Nice tackle. We got a player down oh, for boy. Roanoke. And he doesn't appear to be. Oh, there, there. Thank goodness. We've seen some, some motion, but banged up on the play. Corona. Tom, did you get a number over there? It looks like a lineman. It is not the left tackle. Um, well, anyway, we'll getting going back to yeah. that play, Tom, the only thing that I don't understand is Rono clearly started to gain some momentum, cutting the score score down in half 14 to 7 and just like that the whole feeling of this game took a major shift after that lengthy delay but plenty of time left for this one and luckily the Roanoke player is up and okay but it really did stop the momentum of this game with the nearly I'd say at least a six six seven minute delay trying to get it all sorted out and I think that only hurts Roanoke in this case, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. The injured Rampage player was Andrew Hairston, the backup left tackle. Virginia Department of Corrections getting some playing time here today. Great to see him walk off the field with a little bit of help, but that is definitely a positive sign. Worley Jr., twin receivers to each side with one back. He's rolling right. Heaves one up near the sideline, oh, so incomplete. Good. Out of bounds. That guy crashed into the bench, too. Scary there on the sideline. I, I noticed on the Worley count, Tom, he's clapping his hands, and it's a one count. Mm -hmm. It's almost like he's tipping the defense on that last play. Let's see what he does here. I know it's kind of a quick, quick count, shotgun, quick strike offense that Worley's getting going here in the second half and it's it's worked. Tri-State's defensive coordinator Jay Meyer has done a good job today. He's been in the ear of Raheem Bradshaw in the last few plays. Twin receivers to each side for Worley Jr. He looks right, throws over the middle, incomplete, and no, it's intercepted by Nick Pastore. Oh. Tri-State. Man, Gets that, the ball back. That ball, that guy, you talk about having a nose for the football. Pastore always seems to be at the right place at the right time. And we're going to take another look at this one. As Worley finally looks human. And the right-handed quarterback who replaced Chisholm here in the second half has that one deflected yeah. off of his own receiver. A little high. And Pastore... Johnny on the spot for the Shields. That ball was definitely catchable. In Shields. and out of the hands of the receiver for the Rampage. So a tough break there for Roanoke. Nick Pastore arguably has the best hands in this league, if not one of the best hands in this league. And it showed right there, playing both ways. Have to give this guy a lot of credit. Has a touchdown and an interception. Flea, flea flicker. Ugart flushed out left. 
What a block. And he fumbles the football. Roanoke recovers. But wait a minute. Let's let it unfold. Did they rule him down? It looks like they might have. He is down. Okay. Tri-State will retain John. A little trickery there. Always a uh, little flea flicker action. We'll take a look at it again. Ugart gives to Beckles. Beckles back to Ugart. Ugart with the stiff arm. Stays alive on the run. And then bam. Just a, a showboat tackle by number 47 for Roanoke. That was Donovan Brown. Right over the top of Ugard. Second and 13 from the Rampage 41-yard line. Beckles lined up in the slot right, and Ugard escapes again. Look at him, stiff arm a defender, and there comes That's a, a flag. That's going to be a face mask yeah. on Ugard, I believe. We'll wait and see what the official ruling is. And uh, breaking uh, the capital sin there once again, number 47 defensively. Donovan Brown had worked that last play, but he went high again, and Ugart played Houdini and got out of it. Brown goes low, makes the tackle, the play ends. But either way, it doesn't matter, as Ugart will be called for the face mask. I think Scott's getting called for the face mask or Brown. The defender who grabbed Ugar. Okay, wow. Okay, we're going to go the other way. Both players were grabbing, but the Tri-State one is the one that did not get caught there. Grab, 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 Maybe it wasn't grab, a full grab. grab. Um, so they will get the ball all the way down at the Rampage 26-yard line. First and 10. One of the um, one of the styles of defensive end Zach Deck is he's got a kind of a jerk and grab technique that's been fun to watch today. Uh, keep this an eye on Edwards Zach. on the sweep. Donovan Brown on the stop. Short yardage pick up there. What did Zach Deck call that Tom? His his technique at D end. He called his technique a push pull with a rip. Push pull rip. I would not want to tangle with that Cat, man. He's six a five. Tough kid. Six four. Tall guy. Yeah, you know, listen, these guys will be able to hang out after the game tonight, but there's no love lost. And I see this as if this wasn't a rivalry yet, it is now. I'm gonna tell you right now. And there's gonna be a lot of sore bodies after this one. Edwards takes the handoff once again. Price in there on the stop. A nose tackle, number seventy six. Had four tackles in the LAPD game. And a fun fact about Price, listed as Cleveland PD. One of the former Cleveland players. That's right. On Roanoke as Olchovi will check back into the game. And for those of you new to the National Public Safety Football League, 16 teams in total, eight Division II teams, eight Division I. You are watching NPSFL Division I football here tonight. And we have a whistle. Ball start, Tri-State. Looked like the right tackle moved. And that'll back them up five. So that's going to bring us to third and nine. Third and long upcoming. And let's see what Ugart can do here. A lot of improvements from the FDNY game. Jeff Pastore mentioned after that heartbreaking overtime loss onto Roanoke the day after the game. He told them he was proud of them, but they gave the game away. Important to show that they're not going to lay down despite being 0-2 and likely out of, a, out of the running for a spot in the championship game. Jeff mentioned he is a bit of a sore loser here and there, but in his opinion, they did give the game away. High snap, Ugart scrambling to his left. Throws, oh, Hennon no dropped it. Oh, man, Hennon right there. He was close to the first, too. He might have gotten it, too, with some yak. Yeah, it's just a, just a out-and-out out drop. We all make mistakes. We're all human. 34 to go here in the third quarter. Do you leave the offense out? Uh, I, you know, up seven. 
Why not? It's in that territory again. They don't have Thomas Woodburn tonight. Might as well. They're going to go for it. Let's see what Jeff Pastore has dialed up. His offensive coordinator, Mike Smith, has done a good job today. Special teams coordinator, Tim Cowart, has had his hands full with no pure kicker. Tom, they got nine yards to go. And fourth and nine from the 25. Not much pressure. They throw to Beckles, and he's not going to get there. Thayer made the first contact, and wrapping him up was Persinger, and that will be a turnover on downs. The Rampage will take over with 22 seconds to go in quarter number three. The score is still 14-7. to seven. This has been a very entertaining third quarter. The Rampage are right where they want to be. Well, the Rampage going on a little bit of a Rampage earlier <laughs> in this quarter. <laughs> Uh, with bodies flying all over the place, but uh, every now and then, a little bit of controversy is what might create a rivalry, something this league desperately needs. Everyone normally talks about PDFD from the city of New York with that fun city bowl coming up on June 3rd, but we need other rivalries, Tom, and I think we officially have gotten one here tonight in this defensive battle here in D.C. Worley Jr. throws one deep and both players fall. Pastore and Brown tripped over each other, so a good no call, but as Pastore... <laughs> I think both players acknowledged one another on that one and said, hey, listen, I was... Uh, Let's just run it back. Coincidental or incidental yeah. contact on both of their parts. Both of them went down and... John, I'm excited to talk with you about the Fun City Bowl in quarter number four a little bit. That should be fun not to take away from this exciting game we have on tap here tonight as Worley Jr. second and 10 at his own 20. Four receivers on the field, twins to each side. Worley Jr. hesitates, pump fakes, rolls right, dinks it, intercepted by the Shields. Looked like uh, for the Shields that might have been either Nicholas Rodriguez potentially off of first glance, number 15, and he is hurt and as it's well. His, it's his right knee, Tom, and yeah. he is in a great deal of discomfort. A discomfort, and as, as soon as he got down to the turf, yeah. he pointed to his right knee as if he must have heard something pop or he knew right away right. that there was a problem, and there is a problem. There's and still three seconds in the third quarter, too. And all of these guys now taking a knee as a small circle surrounds the Tri-State Shields player. Look at that replay, too. Rolled up his knee. That's not good. And it'll be interesting to see if Rono can continue to keep themselves alive their defense will be tested yet again tri-state will have excellent field position and right in the middle of that huddle is head coach jeff pastore you gotta like him looking after yeah. his guy there and we're just gonna step aside for a short break here we'll be back briefly on the first responders network back up back up back up back up how long has she been down as we enter the house we see a little girl on the floor incapacitated on response you never know what to expect when you go to the call you don't know what you have until you get there you're watching the national public safety football league on frn john we've identified nicholas rodriguez as the injured party on the field for the tri-state shields and that's a tough one he is a good utility corner for these shields well, the good news is Nico's coming off on uh, his own. Not uh, no, nobody helping him off, so it, that's good news. Uh, it, it initially looked like it could have been something catastrophic to that right knee, but Nico is off on his own, so we're happy to see that, and hopefully Nico will be back. But it will be first and ten, three seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Likely the final play of quarter number three as Ugart, first and 10 from the Rampage 26-yard line. Looks right, dumps it off to Edwards. 
He gets by Burton. He's still going. Beal finally wraps him up. Edwards picks up over 15 yards on that reception, and that's how quarter number three will end. And Tom Edwards had a ton of room to roam in the secondary of Roanoke. Yeah, he had a ton of room, and we'll talk about that briefly. Let's step aside quickly to meet Raheem Bradshaw of the Tri-State Shields and Zach Deck of the Roanoke Rampage, and we'll be back shortly for quarter number four. I'm Zachary Deck. I work for the Roanoke County Sheriff's Office, where I'm a deputy sheriff. So I decided to be a law enforcement officer because I grew up in this community, and I felt it was a good way to give back to the community that had given me a lot. The bond of being on the field with your teammates is like the bond with your brothers and sisters in the field of law enforcement. Hi, my name is Raheem Bradshaw. I'm a sergeant with the Metropolitan Transportation Authority Police Department. I've been a member of service for nine years. I'm a defensive back for the Tri-State Shields. This is my third season with the team. I serve my community as a first responder because as a member who lives in the area, I want to be able to give back to those who look like me and help them achieve their goals and aspirations. I'd like to give a shout out to my family and friends that have supported me out there. Go Shields. You're watching the National Public Safety Football League on FRN. Fourth quarter underway here at H.D. Woodson High School football field here in Washington, D.C. Ugart and the Tri-State Shields looking to pile on more. They're up 14-7. to seven. I'm Tom Scavetta, joined alongside John Heffernan. First and goal from the eight-yard line. The ball was jarred loose late, but I think the back was down. Adam Burton thought he forced the fumble, and John, Adam Burton, great relationship with D.C. Brad Harris, who's called a phenomenal game in my opinion, and you got to speak with Adam Burton a little bit pregame today. Yeah, Adam Burton, just a class act, a loyal individual, really looks at this whole Roanoke Grand Page experience as an extension of his own family, close with his grandparents, Spoke a lot about them, but we've got a big play here and a big stop by the Rampage. And the penalty flag on the field, and before we get to that, to your point, Burton grew up in Harrisburg, Virginia, makes the defensive play calls and alignments. He never played linebacker in high school. He actually played cornerback, has been in law enforcement since 2004, and his dream job was to become... A deputy marshal. And he did just that. And was actually hanging out with some of his colleagues earlier today. Holding on Tri-State will back them up. So that is a good start for Adam Burton and that Rampage defense. And deputy marshals, big on justice, integrity, and service. They live by that motto. No other buddy more deserving and indicative of that motto than Burton. Pastorian. Standout player for the Rampage. Pastorian Olchovi to the left. Hennen and Cribs to the right. They throw in the direction of Pastori incomplete. On second and goal from the 16. And 
John, this is interesting territory here. We haven't really mentioned this today, but the goalpost on the left side of the field slightly off kiltered so I wonder if that could potentially affect. I don't know. I don't know if that'll be too much of a factor. A little, but maybe a bit uneven. Maybe too many uh, fan celebrations <laughs> over the years. Who knows? <laughs> Trying to rip them down like the high school and college kids sometimes are known to do. I, one other shout out for Burton before we go uh, off of that topic. A uh, shout out to Giles High School, which is a real pa football powerhouse here in the state of Virginia. And you had mentioned Burton was a big contributor to that program back in his high school days. Absolutely. Tri-State just took a timeout, and this field is roughly just five years old. Tri-State has done a ton of football games around the country, but they haven't been here, here yet as under the Tri-State Shields name. So it'll be interesting to see if they're able to pull this one out. First time as the Shields playing on this field on Police Week. So very awesome to see. We talked a little bit about what Burton does off the field for Roanoke. Tri-State, big with the Tunnel to Towers Foundation. Suicide Awareness, the Special Olympics. They work with a lot of great charities as well, John. They do, and we'll look forward to seeing more of that in the next 12 to 13 days as we lead up to the 50th annual Fun City Bowl being played this year, Tom, out on Long Island. Is that right? Mitchell Field, same site as last year, June 3rd. I believe kickoff is set to happen around 6.30, maybe Char 7 p.m., no official time yet to our knowledge. And charitable initiatives, a big part uh, of that 50th edition being aired live here on First Responders Network. Hand off to Beckles as Donovan Brown makes the tackle. Good form, and Tri-State's coaching staff is irate. They wanted a penalty against the Rampage. This will be third and goal, third and long upcoming. And back to that fun city bowl, John. It's been an intense rivalry. NYPD leads the all-time series. However, FDNY has won the fun city bowl each of the last three seasons. It is fire, de uh, fire department definitely dominant over the last three years, despite uh, you know a much bigger line typically for the police department. Got to give your props to Steve War, the president of the fire department football team, and their head coach Cam Peak, and they will be in action tomorrow. Speaking of Long Island, Tom, uh, on in Brooklyn tomorrow at Aviator Field, I, I should say. As they take on New York City's boldest. Oh, Gart is sacked by hit. Zach Deck, and there goes the football. Tom, Zach Deck continues to impress. He's relentless. I don't. He doesn't seem the least bit tired either, and that was a huge play by number 88 for Roanoke. For Zach Deck, that is his third sack this season. Second force fumble, had 10 tackles against L.A. Great motor, and, and there's, there's a penalty. And it's going to go against Tri-State. I believe it might go against number 68 for Tri-State. Center. Ambrosio. And I think so Tri-State's still got to be smarting from the lack of that call during that melee in the third quarter. There's been a boatload of penalties here tonight against these Shields. They committed seven against the Fire Department of New York City back on May 6th. Nick Pastore and that Tri-State defense needs to get things together. And Beckles and Pastore having to hold back an assistant coach. Talking to the head official as Roanoke wants to get the playoff, but Tri-State's coaching staff is stalling here by arguing and with Ivan, Gaskill. Ivan Manji trying to talk down some of his guys as well. Roanoke will have the ball first and 10 at their own 37 yard line with 12 minutes, 30 seconds to go. In the fourth quarter, they trail by seven. Four receivers set, twins to each side. They hand off to MJ. We haven't called his name in a little bit. Danny Perez brings him down. 
pickup of three up to the 40 yard yeah, line. So Mike Johnson, I think with the insertion of Worley Jr. became somewhat expendable. And that's maybe the, the trade-off, Tom, when you bring yes. in a mobile quarterback like Worley Johnson seemingly taking a bit of a back seat here in the second half. Roanoke able to get seven on the board. But we are now into the fourth quarter. And we're back to Michael Johnson carrying the football. So let's see what happens on the rest of this series for Roanoke. As Worley Jr. rolls to his left, he'll take off. He scampers ahead for a few more yards. It should be third and short upcoming, I would say about two <coughs> with where the head ref is standing. Tommy, it could be fair to characterize Worley plays with an edge and almost a little bit of a reckless abandon. I mean, no regard for his body. I just throwing it at the sticks there, going for the first down. It still has two to go here on third down, but Worley has impressed me. Fearless out there and explosive. As you mentioned, Roanoke and Tri-State, yes, it's the NPSFL game of the week, but tomorrow... FDNY playing against the boldest out in Aviator Field in Brooklyn. You'll have the NYPD playing against the Chicago PD down in Nashville, Tennessee. A lot of implications at stake for a possible national championship game berth. FDNY 3-0, NYPD 2-0. Roanoke here 1-1, still an outside shot for them. Chicago PD is also 2-0. So there's a lot going on there. Busy weekend of the NPSFL. MJ picked up the first down. And then some. Yep. So it's back to Johnson. Morley Jr. throws. Intercepted by Nick, That's Nick Pastore. Pastore. His second of the game hour. Player yeah. to watch. Comes up clutch once again. That is the second pick for Worley Jr. Both of them to Jeff Pastore's son, you know, Nick. Jeff Pastore just makes it look so easy easy as well it's almost like he's in another gear on another level he just kind of fl he doesn't seem to have to work too hard at it either which goes to show you how hard he does actually work to put himself in the position and the positioning that he is in in order to make these plays game in and game out once again one of the standouts here for tri-state number nine mr everything nick pastore one big adjustment that Tri-State has made not just this game, but their previous game against FDNY. They eliminated the long ball. They focused a lot more on keeping everything in front of them. And Pastore mentioned pregame, he loves being that last line of defense. You know, short passes have turned into big pickups in the past, but not tonight. It's just a huge turnover. Clear front runner for game MVP right now. Ugart eludes some pressure for now. Still running. He just has to take the sack here. Wisely throws it out of bounds. As He's got to be exhausted oh, yeah. after that play. Price got in his face there with the pressure. 10 one to go in quarter number four. Still 14-7. Tri-State really would love to come away with the win here tonight. Not just for the sake of getting a win, but they're without... Miguel Masonette, no Thomas Woodburn on special teams. Arthur White is out with a leg injury. They lost Scott Pedrick to an injury prior to the season. And Another, uh, they're calling intentional grounding, Tom, and it's a late call. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, all good. Thank you for catching. I mean, what, what's going on here with these officials? It's a bit of a late call. And it's going to go against Tri-State with 10-01 left in the fourth quarter. So the intentional grounding will back up the shields inside their own 20. I think that was kind of marginal, borderline. I mean, there, yeah, it was that thrown out of bounds, but there was a receiver in the area. The tackle box is key there. But and no receiver to be found. So it's, it's going to go to first down? So right now it says first and no. 15. We're getting uh, the scoreboards being readjusted as we speak. So. Ugart finds Olchovi. 
Gets really good yardage here before Thayer pushes him back along with Jamal Payne. I would say picked up about half the yardage. Gets past the original line of scrimmage. Gain of about seven on that reception. Little uh, fun fact, Pat Olchovi, former college teammates with one of our FRN staff here. Really? I thought it was just Eric Ortega. No. Oh. Uh, Daniel Parker, our very own Daniel. Nice had, work. I had Daniel. to throw that one in there. College teammates with Pat Olchovi. Third down and eight. Shout out to all of our production staff, by the way. A lot going on behind the scenes that you guys may not see on the TV. And look at you, Gart, go! He's across midfield, still running down the near sideline. He's finally bumped out by Scott. And that's a huge gain for the, you, Gart. The, the, the longest gain of the night on that run by David Ugart. 27 yards. Wow. 27 yards and showing his athleticism. David Ugart, I mentioned it in the first half. This guy continues to grow, continues to make pros progress, and despite not winning a game this season, I have to put Tri-State right at the top of the league as far as talent. They, uh, they have been snake bit this season in the win column, but it looks like they are on their way to possibly getting their first victory of this season. Pistol formation, Beckles takes the handoff. Off tackle to the right, great gain for Marlon Beckles, picked up 11. Beckles has punted the ball tonight, he's run the ball tonight, he's caught the ball tonight. Done a little bit of everything and looked refreshed on that run right there. What hasn't he done tonight, John? <laughs> you could say the same about number nine who just checked back into the ball game, Nick Pastore. Uh, maybe to look to catch an Ugard pass, as if Pastore hasn't done enough. So, Tom, as you like to say, twins to each side, Pastore to Ugard's left. Pastore in motion, left to right across the line. They fake the handoff to him. Stiff arms, one defender down. What a play. Ugard is sacked. Suit by number 22. Nick Spradlin with the sack. Spradlin out of the Virginia Department of Corrections. Excellent tackle, excellent pursuit of Ugard. I have to tell you, despite only the seven points being scored for Roanoke, Brad Harris and that defense has kept them in this game, quite frankly. I mean, without their defense, this isn't oh, absolutely. much of a game right absolutely. now. Absolutely, you're, you're holding a quick stride offensive-minded team in Tri-State to 14 points. You're doing something right with under, we are now at the seven minute mark of the fourth quarter. Brad Harris, one of the two Roanoke staff members still with the, uh, still with the team that were from the original 2009 team. Ugart down the sideline, picked off by the Rampage, Shiloh Beal Jr. Shiloh Beal Jr. as advertised. And just like that, once again, Roanoke refuses to go away. Another huge play by number zero, Shiloh Beal, the player that came on board from the DC Generals days now making huge waves and contributions for the Roanoke Rampage. He had a stripped ball and a bump fumble recovery on the reception by Pastore in the first half, and no bigger play than that one right there, Tom. Out of all the units that have played tonight, I cannot say enough about the Rampage defense and what they've done. Shiloh Beal Jr. entering his name into the conversation for possible player of the game recognition. And with the clock now becoming a factor, Roanoke with the ball at their own 20-yard line, looking to put together a drive here. Edmonds with the catch behind the line of scrimmage, dancing, still juking out defenders. 
advances forward, picks up seven. Excellent hesitation by Ed Edmonds to gain another couple of yards. Fourth reception for him tonight. Had five catches and a touchdown against the LAPD. Two touchdown catches on the season for him, one in each game. Edmonds is their go-to wideout as Worley Jr. has been really struggling over the last few minutes. When he started the third quarter, he looked good, but Tri-State adjusted quickly. And Tony Scarnati comes hobbling off the field. Yeah, he's a linebacker a little... for Tri-State. Thank you. The handoff to MJ. He's running. Cookie on the stop. Picked up two. Cook, cookie Lock. towers over every one of his teammates in that huddle. Big number 34. <laughs> he absolutely does. <laughs> and the clock precious tech is, uh, seconds ticking off as we are now at third and one. Both teams very similar in terms of what their teams are made up of in terms of players. Tri-State, more than just police officers or firefighters, they're a mix of everything. They have some sanitation. Guys, Homeland Security, EMS. MJ, another handoff here, and he is tackled nicely. Danny Perez came in and he might be. I think he's down. got it. Yeah, he's got the first down for sure. Got the first down, but Danny Perez has to take his helmet off, limping one play after Scarnati trickled off, and Scarnati will come back in. You know, Tom, I look at these guys and how hard they work in their respective fields. Uh, number three for Tri State is coming off the field, or that's number eight, right? Perez. Perez. Middle linebacker. Yeah. Danny Perez. Uh, what, what keeps bringing these guys back? I mean, Perez, tough enough job on the streets of New York City as a police officer. Putting your body at risk at this stage, you got to know that each one of these guys absolutely loves and has a passion for the game of football. Four and a half to go, and you can see here down the stretch, pass caught by Edmonds, keeps his feet in bounds, great balance, but Nick Pastore once again on the stop. He's all over the field, John. Pastore pops up, but the Rampage player stays down. And that is Sam Edmonds, that's their number one target offensively. Following his fifth reception of the game. Writhing around in pain. And John, we're going to shout out the Fun City Bowl once again, happening on June 3rd. There will, there will be some sort of recognition for those two teams. Here it is, the NYPD taking on the FDNY, John, and it's always an exciting game. The 50th anniversary of the game. It is. Um, always gets a lot of uh, eyes in the New York City area and beyond on this one. The one both of these teams have circled on their calendar from the start of the season. In this rivalry, we talked about one being created here tonight in Washington, D.C. Well, no one has to worry about getting up for that game on June 3rd. Uh, both of those teams really get after it and if you've never seen either the fire department in new york or the police department be sure to come out to brooklyn yeah farmingdale new york i'm sorry tom it's at farmingdale high school on the third it will be at farmingdale Middle mitchell school. field in uniondale new york mitchell field in uniondale that's right Two years ago, the game was held in MetLife Met Stadium. Life, that's right, that's correct. And if you can't get to the game, watch it live on FRN. Little flip pass there as Worley Jr. was going down. Rampage pick up the first down. Gain of about 10. They needed eight. And they're moving the ball close to midfield, John. And they're moving the sticks again. Brown. Reckless abandon, letting it all hang out on this drive are the rampage and tom maybe that sense of desperation we could have seen or like to have seen from roanoke more of uh, in the third quarter instead of losing some of their discipline as they did but either way they're on the comeback trail shout out to fdny head coach cam peak 
messaging us live during the broadcast. Okay, always one of, the, one of the best in the business. Kimmer, the what's going on, buddy? The undefeated MP. We have a timeout on the field. And we're going to take a brief break here. So we'll be right back here on the First Responders Network. Prior to our arrival, a guy was driving by, just raised the question like, is anyone in there? Does anyone check to see if anyone's in there? And so he goes to the first window he goes to, he's like, hello, is anyone in there? And a guy showed up right at his face. You're watching the National Public Safety Football League on FRN. Welcome back, folks, here. H.D. Woodson football field in Washington, D.C. Tom Scavetta join alongside John Heffernan. The Tri-State Shields lead the Roanoke Rampage 14-7. 3.09 remaining in the fourth quarter. Tri-State with two timeouts, Roanoke with three. Game clock resets to 3.13 on the game clock here. Uh, but Worley Jr. has trips to the right on this play. He's been hanging in there tough. He struggled a little bit coming in cold after halftime. The Rampage made an adjustment, but Tri-State John made an adjustment to that adjustment as Worley Jr. takes the snap and he's taking off here. Gets past a couple of players and Scarnati finally wrapped them up. Looked like a little shift in the defense there for the NYPD. It looked like a nickel D, Thomas. Five players were kind of stacking the deck there, expecting perhaps the run. And not a lot of room out there on that play for Worley. I was talking before how the Tri-State Shields are made up of all different types of first responders well so are the Roanoke Rampage they're made up of police officers firefighters correct correction officers all in the Roanoke Valley except for of course a couple of players who are from the DC area Worley Jr. takes off again he won't escape this time he is sacked nicely done it looked like Robert Rivera Got He's, in there. Th this is Scarnati uh, this too. This is probably one of the most physical games I've seen all season. And Worley is getting dinged up for sure on the cover four defense. Little adjustments by Tri-State seem to be paying off as Worley has slowed down. As we are now at third and five. Under two minutes to go. A minute, 46 seconds remain. Third down and five. Roanoke down seven, the handoff to MJ. He will get close, he needed five, he got four. It'll be fourth and one. And getting that initial hit, Tony Scarnati biting through a block to get the initial contact on that play. Scarnati back in the ball game after being banged up and he, Tom, always lets it all hang out of the field. So will likely be a timeout taken here by the Rampage, I'd imagine. Yep, Rampage timeout. John will keep it here. And want to quickly chat out how the Roanoke Rampage are partnered with Roanoke County Sheriff's Department for the Special Olympics Torch Run. It's a 1,900-mile run and an eight-day torch. They've also done some charity work with the West End Center for Youth last season. And want to quickly acknowledge something uh, Todd Ferris had talked to us about, John, earlier this week. The Running for Heroes nonprofit led by teenager Zachariah Cartledge. The board of directors has been in place since 2019. And Cartledge, a young, a young gentleman with a deep respect for law enforcement, first responders, developed a passion for running at the age of five years old. At seven years old, how impressive is this, John? He started competing in 5K events, and that organization has raised over $11,000 in 2018 for the Tunnel to Towers Foundation honored fallen 9-11 police officer Walwyn Stewart. Awesome stuff for the Roanoke Rampage. Wanted to get that in there for, for Todd and his team. And, of course, Zachariah and his family. 
Fourth down and a short two. It's really fourth and one, but Worley Jr., it's gonna be close. He, I think he has it. Well, he on has this, it. On this second effort, Worley got it. He initially ran into his lineman. The center, Will Matty, bounced off of Matty and on the second effort gets enough for the first down and the Rampage are still alive with 1.18 to go. This is gonna go down to the wire. Great push by the O-line too. This is the deepest their offensive line has ever been. Roanoke down to two timeouts. They have to move. The clock is ticking. Close to one minute left in the game. And a timeout by Tri-State. Let's see. It's an official's timeout. Waiting to see what uh, is going on here. As MJ has been a great part of this Roanoke offense today. Best running back this coaching staff has been around. Loves to study game film. It's shown today. So we got the Kern brothers in the secondary along with Pastore and Lacayo. And things continue to be discussed between the official and now calling over. Uh, we're gonna get going here. So huge play right here. First and 10 under a minute to go. One minute and four seconds remain. Worley Jr. Throws a cannon, it is deflected by Nick Pastore. Pastore, Incomplete. Johnny in the spot throwing, throwing that one, Worley into double coverage. Intended receiver for the Rampage, didn't have a lot he could do with it. That was <clears throat> number one, uh, Deontay, Deontre Brown. The intended target, deep threat, a lot of speed for Brown. Although I will say the Rampage, they've looked a lot more in sync in the second half. They focused a lot more on the basics ever since that LA game. Good movement and communication. Well, the secondary is gonna get tested here in the next couple of plays for sure. Three down line and a high snap. Here comes the blitz. Worley Jr. throws along the sideline. It's caught. Edmonds gets out of bounds. The clock will stop until the ball is placed. And it's good for... Uh, Looks like it should be enough for a first down. Yeah, a gain of about 10 yards. Looks like third, third and short. You give them nine. Wow, interesting. Right at the stick. Yeah, 36 but yard line. Gets, uh, gets a tri-state placement. Third and inches for the Rampage. like Shiloh Beal Jr. has checked in on offense. This is MJ, gets across the 35 down to the 31, and the Rampage need to take a timeout here. Converging on Johnson, included for Tri-State. In on that one was Bradshaw. John, you know, I love how Roanoke, despite down seven, with under a minute to go, refuses to abandon the running game. Johnson getting the, the handoff yet again. MJ's been a force today. Played defensive back at VMI. For those of you who don't know, that is the Virginia Military Institute. Was the team MVP last season. Eight touchdowns in just four games of play. Roanoke's only loss was a game he did not play in. They went 4-1, and one, won the national championship. Roanoke, before winning last year's national championship at the D2 level, was previously 0-3 in those games. They lost in 2013 to Dallas, 2016 to the Central Texas Wolfpack, and in 2018 to Philly. So great to see them in Division One. And for Roanoke, regardless of what happens here, they'll be playing on June 3rd against the Charlotte Cobras in Salem, Virginia, back at home. And for the Tri-State Shields, they'll wrap up their season against the New York Boldest, the Corrections Department of New York City, on June 3rd. And they uh, look 
gonna hang on here. First and 10 though. Worley Jr. takes the snap. Rivera in his face, throws the ball wide, wide open. open in the end zone for a touchdown. Four. On the Roanoke Rampage, the Andre Brown. A 30-yard touchdown strike. There are no flags on the play. DeAndre Brown from a rolling out. Quarterback four. Let's take a look at this again, John. The Rampage, Worley Jr. looking, creating something out of nothing on the Wide run. Wide open breakdown defensively. You see past story was a little too in miscommunication between yeah, him. They, the, the secondary started to pinch thinking Worley was going to run with it, which he did, but didn't go over the line of scrimmage, got rid of the ball. And folks, the biggest extra point or two point conversion is coming right up. Tom, do they go for the win or do they go for the tie? Special teams has been an issue this season for Roanoke. Roanoke just took their final timeout of the game to answer your question. I think they're going for two. I think they're going to do what they tried against FDNY. Well, what an ending to this one. It didn't work out in their favor against the fire department of New York. They got burned then, no pun intended. What will happen now? But you, either way, Zach Hayden, Rolling the dice. He's not afraid to. Going for two as the clock now down to 10 seconds. Left in the game. 10 seconds left in the game. Tri-State looking They're to They're going to have to hurry to get 20, this off. 27 seconds left. The game, the game clock is at 27 seconds. Trips to Worley Jr.'s right. In the game to his right at the running back position is MJ. With 27 seconds to go. Split out wide left is Lewis Bell. Worley Jr. throws, it is intercepted by the Shields. Nicely done, and that should be enough to win the Shields this game. What a play. I'm trying to see who picked off it's that ball. It's number eight for Tri-State. That's going to be Danny Perez. Yeah, Perez picked it off the two-point conversion. Perez wow. just stepped right up as we take a look at it again. Kind of a jump Floater. pass. Yeah. And Perez stepped right in front of number 10 for Roanoke, Sam Edmonds. And that should do it, folks. Well. The game is not over yet. There's still an onside kick to be had. Wow, but Tom, what do you think about the head coach for Roanoke? Zach Hayden going for it with the two-point conversion attempt. I 100% agree with it because I remember Thursday afternoon, we were on our phone call with the head coach, or yes, and he was saying, no, it was Jamison actually. Jamison Ratcliffe said special teams is not effective right now due to lack of practice. So Jay Goode, the special teams coordinator, will have to draw something up here to see if the Rampage can recover this onside kick and maybe throw a couple deep balls down the field. Wow, what great analysis though. Wow, a that was finish here in Washington DC, National Police Week in memorial Ising all of our fallen law enforcement officers. And we got a great game here on First Responders Network two weeks in a row. Last week we went to overtime and yep. who knows what the ending, we've seen a little bit of everything here today, Tom. Timeout Tri-State, one and two, maybe readjust their alignment. And seeing I think that that's Roanoke. their final timeout. Yep, Roanoke had six Players lined up to the left side of Baker. 4 2 is right. So again, they could easily do a little pooch kick and try to outrun the Shields and try to recover it. But with 27 seconds left, there's only so much you could do at this point of the game. Well, they're going to have to. They're going to have to uh, get the ball back, that's for sure. If I had to take a guess, I would say. Past story will recover this onside kick. Oh, what a game-saving interception. 
for Tri-State. Danny Perez. Danny Perez. Nick Pastore, certainly two defensive standouts today. Shiloh Beal on the other side for Roanoke uh, defensively, really impressed as well as Zach Deck. Um, Tom, we got a lot of a lot yeah, of, a lot of lots left to unfold here. But uh, who who's in the conversation for your MVP of the game? It's a hundred percent Nick Pastore, two-way player who plays on both sides of the ball. Two picks, had that awesome pass breakup and the one touchdown for the Shields. The 20 yard touchdown and also had a 38 yard catch. Yes, he did have that fumble, but he has been the heart and soul of the Shields team today. Onside kick, and the Shields got it. So that should do it. They'll be able to run it out. Tom, take a knee. Looked like uh, Joey Maniscalco, number 28, recovered that onside kick. And John, this is really heartbreaking for Roanoke. Not just losing two games by one point this season, losing them both on failed two-point conversion attempts. Well, well, if there's ever an example of a team that knows what it's like to lose this season, Tri-State finally getting into the win column. Yes, 27 seconds remain, but this should do it. And uh, we want to give a big congratulations to Jeff Pastore and his coaching staff and an excellent performance by Nick Pastore, both offensively and defensively. And I call this a David Ugard coming out party today. He showed a lot more patience in the pocket, made much better decisions with the football. And this was a rivalry born here tonight in Washington, D.C. as things got chippy, things got physical. We had a little bit of everything here tonight, Tom Scavetta. Want to announce our player of the game will be Nick Pastore. End time, 9.51 p.m. Eastern time. The Tri-State Shields have improved to one and two on the year, beating the Roanoke Rampage by a final score of 14 to 13. The Tri-State Shields get their first win of the 2023 season. Jeff Pastore, his 10th victory as head coach of the Tri-State Shields. And John, before we go to these highlights here for Nick, talk to me about him and his performance today. Well, I'm just happy for Coach Pastore and his staff. Uh, a couple of tough losses today. Really nothing to lose here in Washington, D.C. for the Tri-State Shields. But this team continues to improve and get better and better. And despite just getting their first victory of the season as we watch the handshake line uh, here in D.C., um, it's crazy to say Tri-State kind of out of the running for any postseason or championship play. But still, in my opinion, despite the first win tonight, one of the better teams in the NPSFL. And all credit to their coaching, their offensive playmakers, and our player of the game, Nicholas Pastore. Let's get to some highlights for number nine in black and silver, Nick Pastore. We're going to take a look right now. Pastore, of course, are you overwhelming MVP of the game as we work on these. Uh, here we go for the replays right here. This is the Let's, one touchdown. This is the 20-yarder. That's the first one wide open. Ugart rolling to his left. And Pastore just has a way of getting open, Tom. And obviously, Ugart and Pastore communicate well because that play wasn't Design Pastore finding space. This one, a big interception right here off the deflection. The first one. And let's now go to this will be the, the next one. pick for Pastore. This time it's Athletic Worley. Play. Good length, too, jumping up for it. Every time Roanoke got some sort of advantage, John, Nick would be there to make a play, and this might be the uh, pass break up there on Edmonds. Great job there, and that that was a uh, game saver right there as both teams come together at close to the 50-yard line uh, here at the conclusion of the post-game handshake in our uh, NPSFL FRN Game of the Week. Tom, a lot of fun out there, another close one. Uh, last week went to overtime, so we're on we're, we're, we're a roll here ourselves. Absolutely. Uh, two very, very close games. Once again, our player of the game is Nick Pastore. Had 
four catches, a 20-yard touchdown, a 38-yard catch. He did have that fumble, but he made up for it with those two interceptions, an awesome pass breakup. Who else stood out for you on the rampage side of the ball? Well, Shiloh Beal, we talked a lot about yeah. him. We talked about Zach Deck. He and, was great. You know, Zach Hayden making the big change at halftime and pulling out their starter for Worley, who was really just a Tasmanian devil out there. I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. reckless, abandoned, made things happen, though. I think got the reaction that they wanted uh, by stirring things up. And the Rampage scored a quick touchdown, came within seven, then ended up nearly tying the ball game up and went for the win. So this really could have gone either way. It really could have. As Tri-State improves to one and two on the year by a final score, 14 to 13. Roanoke drops the one and two. One, two, thank everybody. You know, Jeff Pastore and Ivan Manji, the team president who also plays for Tri-State, doing a fantastic job. And our first time covering the Roanoke Rampage football team, we want to thank... Todd Farris, Jamison Radcliffe, head coach Zach Hayden, Brad Harris. We want to thank everybody who really helped us out tonight and made this a really pleasant experience. The Roanoke Rampage. I was very impressed by their play tonight. Absolutely. You know, defense has been their specialty. They make no secret about it. And uh, we can honestly say and agree, I hope, a brand of smash mouth football that we have not seen. They do things different down here in the South, in uh, Virginia and D.C. And, um, you know, an exciting game, a physical game. And I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, Tom, I really believe a rivalry was born here tonight in an incredible game, a one-point game. And uh, you're right, the Rampage have been nothing but gracious to us. And, heck, I'm just glad we finally got a chance to see them play. It was an awesome game. The Roanoke Rampage once again. One and two, Tri-State improves to one and two. Tri-State wins 14 to 13. John, any final thoughts? Just a, once a, another congrats to Jeff Pastore getting his first win tonight, Tom. As you mentioned, uh, he's had a bunch of success in this season, uh, in this league. But um, like, in a, like with anything else, there ebbs and flows to every team, every organization, every season. But it's good to see Tri-State with the win here tonight um, as their season will continue. And we got other... Out of town scores to check as well uh, as we lead to the national championship game, which will be uh, after the Fun City Bowl on June third. So uh, still a lot of football left uh, with the NPSFL and FRN. Absolutely, John. It's been a pleasure as always. Want to thank you again for joining us here. Uh, the two of us have been a lot of uh, fun to talk about this game tonight, the Fun City Bowl, fiftieth annual Fun City Bowl. Really looking forward to it. The NYPD trying to stop the three-year losing skid, uh, losing skid in the 50th annual Fun City Yeah, Bowl. lots of emotions out there. A lot of amazing charitable initiatives. It's a big, great day. Uh, June 3rd, uh, kickoff 615, I believe. Uh, An official word on that. I got gotcha. you. Anyway, we're going to be carrying it for you live on FRN. And um, if you can make it out to the ballpark, uh, Mitchell Field, the football field, I should say. Um, on June third, it's it's just a great day of tailgating fun and a lot of lot of charity initiatives that are involved in that as well and and just a excellent level of football. John, it's a pleasure as always, folks. We'd like to thank all of our viewers for tuning into our coverage tonight. Tune in Saturday, June third, for the fifty for the fiftieth annual Fun City Bowl, where the NYPD take on the FDNY out in Mitchell Field. Long Island, New York, with kickoff set for 6.30 p.m. Tonight's production, tonight's broadcast is a production of the First Responders Network. The vice president of Axon Studios is Rob Wynn. Executive producer is Rob Campbell. Head of production and development is Mike Green. Senior producer and director is Daniel Parker. Assistant director and producer is Tony Coranta, Jr. The executive in charge of production is Howard Bolter. Replay operator and audio mixer is Joe Ryder. Our technical director is George Zayas. Technical operators are Mike Lombardi, Bahir Mustafa, Elvis Colon, Andrew Scarpacci, and Manav Kamal. For John Heffernan, I'm Tom Scavetta saying so long from our nation's capital. The final score, the Tri-State Shields, 14. The Roanoke Rampage, 13. You've been watching the NPSFL here on the First Responders Network. And let's take a look at this next ad here. Have a good night, everybody. Police Week. Every year in May, 
we gather in the nation's capital. From every corner of the country, police officers join together to honor and remember those we've lost in the line of duty. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the families our heroes leave behind, and we uphold our promise to never forget. Nearly 24,000 names adorn the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. These everyday heroes leave behind a legacy of service that we honor this week. Today, we gather for more than a game. Today, we gather to celebrate the lives of the brave men and women we've lost in service to their communities. Today, we play for our brothers to our left and to our right, and for the countless friends we've lost along the way.